First guys, try. Uh, welcome, welcome, podcast guys. Hey, hey, here we are. Does this button work? No. Okay. What's <laughs> wrong with you? It's going so well. Oh, just like life. <laughs> I don't know. Stupid thing. How's yeah. it going, guys? Welcome, welcome, podcast. I'm good. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I spent my entire. Oh no! I spent my entire Christmas. The, the, the break. only, the only good answer is fine. How are you? Well, <laughs> I haven't been fine because I spent okay. my entire Christmas break. Whole family sick as a dog. Oh, my Lord. New Year's Day was like, I was in bed for most of it, mm-hmm. and I blame the one little punk who got my kids sick at preschool. <laughs> oh. So brought it home and like infected the rest. The kids are fine now. Mm-hmm. I'm still hacking a phlegm left and right. I got a sinus I hear congestion, you. like I hear in you. my you got, like, crushing my. You brain. didn't sound like this until you just started. Until we I just because, started. I think because now I'm like talking more, mm-hmm. and like because before I wasn't talking like more than two sentences at a time. Right. I I understand. I understand. So you know, mom also. Oh God, she did, called did you talk me to today, her? and I was like, "You should stop talking." Yeah, like we called her yesterday to ask if we could borrow her car. And oh my god, she sounded like she smoked a million packs a day. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. She, I, she should never talk again. <laughs> yeah, it's like a stop. <laughs> I was like, you need to relax yeah. right now. Anyway, uh, through thick and thin, we were, yeah, we did I've this. Been, I've been for fine. For you, I've for been fine. You haven't been doing this much. This is a you people promo. We do this for <laughs> you people. Uh, and we had a little conversation today. I, I we almost didn't do the podcast because true. there's still nothing going on. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> It was really touch and go there for a minute. Yeah. But again, we decided to do it for you people. For you people. And also, I think we have I think we have an interesting conversation starter. We, we do. I, the, I like the idea you, you, you came up with. It's the start of a new year. Nobody knows what that's going to bring. So we decided, why not fuck around and find out? <laughs> I didn't tweet, so I'm tweeting right now. Wacky and wild gaming predictions of 2023. And then you go to and then you go to twitch.tv slash wolfden and you come and you watch the podcast. That's how you do it. Uh so before we do that though, there are, believe it or not, uh free games. Yes, they that that didn't stop. No, in the year that of our keeps Lord, going. 20, uh twenty twenty three. Although for one console, it probably should. <laughs> oh no. And we'll get to that in a I'm minute. I'm scared for them. Okay. But we'll start with the company that's still giving you free ga- actual free games. Um when you subscribe to them. Sony. Uh Sony. Uh, it's just subscribe to PlayStation Plus all tiers. Does my button work? No. This okay. stupid thing sucks. Uh so no matter what tier of PlayStation Plus you're subscribed to this month, uh you get Starting oh, uh, starting today, a uh, you get Jedi Fallen Order, the PS4 and PS5 edition. That's huge. That might actually incentivize me to finish it. <laughs> I have been, okay, I shouldn't say I have been actively playing it, but I've yeah. been trying to get through it uh, on my Steam Deck. I paid $10 on the Steam. It was on That's Steam ridiculous. for $10. I paid full price for it when the game came out, and I haven't finished it yet. But I I, I, I I like what I played so far. At the time, it's, I was like, I don't, I, I'm done with these triple A, you know triple A like hack and slash situations. But <laughs> playing it, it's kind of really fun. I like playing it. I said to myself when I was playing, like, I'm never gonna finish this game. I am not into this type of like Dark Soulsy combat. Yeah, I just exactly. want to like, get through it. But the more I played of it, the more I like understood it and like came to accept it and respect it in a way. Mm-hmm. Especially like the Metroidvania style level design of it, that was really well done. Guess how much it is on Steam? Fifteen bucks. Four dollars and seventy nine wow. cents. <laughs> and if you want the deluxe edition, I don't know what that comes with. I think it uh, comes with extra like lightsabers and stuff. Six ninety nine. There you go. So I mean, well, I mean, I mean, look, it's good as free. Yeah. Uh, well, it comes with your PlayStation Plus subscription. Yes. The point we're trying to make here is. Don't sleep on this game. This is genuinely a good game. So, do they they let you keep it after the uh, month, right? Yeah. If you okay. if you claim it, you make sure you claim it within the month of January, and you basically keep it for as long as you have a PlayStation Plus subscription. So, so, so if you have PlayStation Plus, any of the tiers, download it now. And even if you don't feel like playing it now, maybe you'll want to play in the future. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, we got a raid from Geo the Hero. Oh, hey. I, I know him. Hello. Everybody go watch Geo the Hero live at some point yeah. in your life. Uh, thanks for raiding. And this is, good, this is good hype for uh, the next game that's coming out this year, Jedi Survivor. Oh, Jedi Fallen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A game that Geo the Hero would like, Axiom Verge. Yes, uh, Axiom Verge 2 also coming to PS4 and PS5 this month. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that fun. I get another Metroidvania that people mm -hmm. seem to enjoy. Axiom Verge 2. I have not played either. I me, me, played me, the first I've, one or the second. No, I played a little bit of the first one. First one's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like I should get play more of it. To this really is a Metroid, uh, yeah. Metroid fan type game mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and then Fallout 76. <laughs> not a Metroid uh, type game. Uh, everyone's least favorite Fallout. Also... Uh, we should note who makes Fallout seventy six, Bob. Oh yeah, Bethesda does. Well. And who owns Bethesda? Uh, uh, Phil Spencer does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox owns Bethesda. So, how does an Xbox owned game, yeah, go f uh, free with subscription on a competitor's platform when on the Xbox side of things? Oh no. They're not giving away anything to write home about. Oh, no. For the whole month of January, you get Iris Fall on Xbox what One and Series X and S. And then from the 16th to February 15th, you get Autonauts. What the fuck is that? What are these games? I all the games. Here's the thing. I hate I hate discouraging, like... Uh, not no name, but like low low level like indie games. Like they don't even give you a video with it. I know. I, I hate discouraging like games like this, like you've never heard of them before, because like every so often, like you find like a gem amongst yeah amongst the yeah. The, the, the desert. You get like an Among Us or Among Us, yeah, or a Fall Guys or like some random wacky cool thing that people genuinely enjoy. It becomes mm -hmm. like a a well known thing, but. If this is like a selling point of your online subscription service, it's not a good selling no, point. Not like at all. You got to give us, I'm not saying give us Halo <laughs> right away, but like. They own so many studios. They do. They could very easily they really compete do. with like, Sony in this way. You know, Wolfenstein The New Order came out like 10 years ago at this point. Give us that. Yeah. That's a good game. No, I agree. People like that. Or the not Dishonored too, but like the the side cool that came out like immediately after it. I don't remember the name of it. Give did, us that. Did you just call it a side cool? Yeah. I've never heard that before. You know, it's like it's not a sequel, but it's like a side story yeah. to Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So wait, if you scroll down though, it's uh, there's a video and it says games with gold and some of them are January first to January thirty first. What's this? New games with the gold January oh twenty twenty two? Yeah. <laughs> Why would they put that there? I don't know. They're just showing us what we could have. Yeah. Those suck too, though. Those are bad too. But at least I've heard of Radiant Silver Gun and okay. Space Invaders. True. Okay. I'll allow it. So, somebody in the chat said Fallout 76 uh, has gotten a lot better. Okay. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I'm yeah. not, I wasn't even a really big fan I mean, of Fallout 4, to be completely honest. I mean, to be fair, most games like that do get better yeah. over time. Yeah, because it released broken and yeah. shit. So, I mean, most Bethesda games release released broken. Now they do. Um, somebody in the chat also said they just snagged Fallen Order. Okay, uh, good. Uh, you mentioned Wolfenstein, which I thought was very interesting because okay. uh, Amazon... We never talk about Amazon Prime games. No. Amazon is going nuts right now. Okay. They're giving a lot of shit away. Um, balloons. Remember balloons? <laughs> Give it that away. No, they have Dishonored 2 straight up. Yes. Take it. It's yours. Yeah. For 28 days. A lot of SNK games are free for the whole year. Wow. It looks like. It says 300 and ends in 330 days. That's cool. Yeah. So all you need is an Amazon Prime subscription and you get all, all these games. Twink, Twinkle Star Sprites? I don't know what that is. SNK, 40th Anniversary Collection, Metal Slug X, Metal Slug 3, King of Fighters, uh, all that stuff. Destiny 2, oh, these are like packs for certain games. Yeah. I think it ended, but there was a lot more stuff the last few days. And I think Wolfenstein was one of them. Okay. Yeah, so I think we missed that. 
Which is unfortunate. Yes. Lawn mowing simulator is free, Will. There you go. It's the winter. I know you really love <laughs> I, mowing I, the lawn. I have been missing it. And you can't have do it right it. now. Yeah. It's so. good. It helps me get through my podcasts. Mom Hid My Game is free until uh, the the for 22 days. Get that. Get that. That game is fantastic. I love that game. Oh, The Evil Within, too, is also free. Oh, okay. Don't get that. That game. doesn't say it ends ever. That yeah. just says... It says new. Uh, Breath Edge? I don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks like Amazon kind of frequently has some good stuff. Yeah. I will say, of all like the, the tech companies that really try to get like a foothold in gaming and fail miserably, <laughs> Amazon is like seriously the only one who like is like dead set on making this work. Yeah. They will make fetch happen, so help them God. Uh, I, I like Prime Gaming. Uh because every so often in a game that I'm like playing, you'll get like something. Yeah. Like they had stuff for Valorant at one point. Uh, they had stuff for Destiny and for Warframe. When I when I first downloaded Warframe, I got like extra boosts and I got like uh, some some extra weapons and shit just for having Amazon yeah. Prime. So, uh, linking linking Prime and and that shit is a little bit worth it. Also. You get a free subscription to any Twitch channel that you want. There you go. And it, it, you get one every single month. And if you're listening to this on a podcast service. That it better be us. You probably only listen yeah. to us. They're probably not Twitch people. And that's fine. That's fine. If you're yeah. not a Twitch person, come over here. Give us some money. It's like a little tip jar. Uh, anyway. Xbox ain't looking too good this month. No. It's not looking too good for, for a while. <laughs> I mean, at, at, at a certain point, they have to be like, you know, give us something yeah. to write home about or just stop giving us games. But the problem then becomes if you stop giving us games, then the only reasons to subscribe to Xbox Live Gold is online multiplayer, which is becoming less and less of a reasonable proposition and the occasional discounts on sales. Like so, that's it. So Game Rant just posted an article uh, five hours ago that says new Xbox Game Pass games for January 19th are a blow to PlayStation. Okay. Uh, let's see what this is about. Uh, it was in that spirit that the shock announcement was made that formerly PlayStation exclusive Persona 5 Royal would not only be jumping shipped to Xbox. Has, didn't we know that already? Yeah, we knew that already. Is this, I feel like we do this a lot. I will look up uh, Xbox games, and it'll be an old article that they updated. Yeah. And anyway, Persona Five Royal is coming. Um, Persona Three Golden and, and uh, Persona Three Portable and Four Golden. Uh, yeah, we knew all this already. Yeah. Oh, Monster Hunter Rise coming January twentieth. We knew deal. that, but that's coming this month. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah. So that's gonna, I think, run. It runs 1080p 60. I think it might even go up to 4K. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah. Because that's a Switch game. Yes. So take that, fucking Pokemon. <laughs> uh, and that's it, I guess. So yeah. Xbox Game Pass has a good month, but I mean, you know, PlayStation Plus uh, Extra already yeah. has phenomenal games. So whatever. Anyway, we missed a bunch of notifications. I didn't read anything. No. You guys gave us some subs and stuff. So, Kikoba, thank you for the 38 months. Do I have to play Metroid Prime before I can play with my food at dinner? Yes. Yeah, uh, I highly recommend it. Also, it, Fusion? Yeah, it gives, it gives you context for why your mom is so mad yes. that you keep throwing your peas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The Dank Knight, thanks for the 27 months. Happy New Year, Wolf Bros. Happy New Year. Happy oh, yeah. New Year. Oh, yeah. Happy yeah. New Year, by the way. It's a new year. Uh, Luke Anton with 37 months Wolf Bros will we ever see an animated adaptation of the podcast <laughs> possibly on Netflix I don't know about on Netflix listen I'm not opposed to yeah. it I'm also not opposed to having an animated adaptation of the podcast so yeah. you so never know we're open, we're uh, open. Paramount Plus <laughs> Nico Nico Mo Mosso thank you for the 14 months Geo the Hero thank you for the raid and Wicked Spooky, thanks for the nine months. Yo, guys, hope you're both well. Wishing you only the coolest shit this new year. I like that one. Yeah. I like how he worded that. Thank you, Wicked Spooky. Uh, anyway, now we can get on to the meat of the show. Yeah. I feel like there was another thing that was giving out free games. Now I can't think about it. 
Oh, no. Steam. I want to talk about Steam. Oh, Steam's, Steam's giving out free games now? Not really. Okay. Um, Steam has a winter sale, though, okay. that ends in two days. That ends on Thursday. Okay. Uh, and that is why Jedi Fallen Order is $5. Right. Or less than $5, because there's a lot of shit on sale. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, here's a bunch of uh, friggin' Miles Morales uh, is 3749. Oh, there you go. And didn't that just come to to Steam? Yeah. Elden Ring is 4199. Okay. Stray is 2399, which is not a deal. That's not yeah. a deal at all. Uh Cyberpunk's on sale. Death Stranding is 2399. I think it's been cheaper. Uh Lego Star Wars the Skywalker Saga 2499. That's 50% off. Mm-hmm. Uh Final Fantasy let me get my glasses. <laughs> Seven remake in integrate. That's the second one. That I think that's like one point five technically. Oh my good god! This is what happens when you remake a game in three parts. Uh, thirty nine eighty nine. Also, Hitman three is twenty ninety nine. I don't know if we have an article about this, but I just read that if we, you we do, let's. Let's well, do I it now. Skip to that. Let's do it now because if you get Hitman Three, okay, yeah, for twenty ninety nine, it's the press release from IO Interactive regarding the future of Hitman Three. Hitman Three is now going to become known as Hitman World of Assassination. Mm-hmm. In twenty in twenty fifteen, we shared our vision for the World of Assassination, an ever expanding game that would evolve over time and be the foundation for future Hitman games. Those are the exact words we use, and the central promise to how we've released these three games in the seven years that followed. Today, we're excited to announce uh, some upcoming changes to how players, both existing and new, will experience, access, and purchase Hitman 1, 2, and 3. These changes will make it easier than ever to enter and enjoy the world of assassination and finally allow us to realize the vision we set out to achieve. As of January 6th, 20, sorry, as of January 26th, 2023 january 26 2023 the following changes are planned to come into effect change one hitman 3 will become hitman world of assassination which will also include access to hitman 1 and hitman 2 through our existing access pass system current hitman 3 owners will get a free upgrade to hitman world of assassination on all platforms change two we're drastically simplifying the purchasing experience for new players Hitman World of Assassination will be the single available option to start playing. Essentially, these two changes will mean that all new players and existing Hitman 3 owners will have the same base content ownership. There will be no more confusion over which edition to buy, uh, what content you own, or how to redeem legacy packs or import locations, etc. We are done with that. So, the world of assassination. We're approaching these changes with no compromises to approach. Uh, we want to make absolutely sure that the experience to, of entering or enjoying the world of assassination is simple and straightforward. Let's break it down. We are streamlining. We are streamlining. Did I say that right? Streamlining. Stream, streamlining. I'm not well. <laughs> we are streamlining the many offerings currently on stores uh, down to two products. These will replace the existing ways to buy Hitman 1, 2, and 3. I don't I don't like this press release. It's just Hitman 1, 2, and 3 are are going to be a part of Hitman 3. If you own Hitman 3, you get 1 and 2, right? That's that's <laughs> Well, here's here's how they break it down. Okay. There's Hitman World of Assassination. Okay. That's a that's a $70 game. Okay. That includes Hitman 3, Plus Hitman 1 and Hitman 2. Mm-hmm. Then there's the World of Assassination Deluxe Pack for about $30. And this includes the DLC expansion packs for Hitman 3 and Hitman 2. So what happens if you own Hitman 3 already? If you own Hitman 3, you get the base game of Hitman 1 and 2. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say... If you fucking get Hitman 3 yes. for twenty ninety nine. you also will get 1 and 2 when this happens. Yes. On the 26th. Mm-hmm. So there you go. There you go. And and, and now, Hitman, th- this new reboot to Hitman yes. was at a time when Square thought that uh, 
games were going to be released episodically. Episodically. Yeah. So Hitman 3. Well, Hitman 1. Yeah. Hitman, when Hitman 1 came out, that was released episodically. Every okay. level was a different episode released like month to month or whatever. Okay. And then they collected it all as Hitman 1. Yes. Okay. And then IO Interactive broke free from Square and released Hitman 2 on their own. Okay. As a full game. Mm-hmm. but still connected to the first game so you can import all of your stuff over. Okay. And they continue that with Hitman 3. Okay. That's good. Yes. As a fan and a player of this recent trilogy of Hitman games, I will attest that this is a great feature, but it was confusing. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know if I had everything I needed when I imported it to Hitman 2. And I think I might have lost my save data from Hitman 1. Oh, no. I have never played a Hitman game, but I like these sort of these sort of like stealth sandboxes yes so i feel like i would really like it yeah the you would really like this 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 is honestly one of my favorite games of the whole generation so maybe i'll end up getting yeah this absolutely 2099 have, hitman 3 then yeah i still have to finish hitman 3 but i do like the fact that everything everything is being put together in one simple package right you know i don't have to make sure i have hitman 1 and 2 on my xbox already it'll just be included so I'm really looking forward to this. It might get me back into playing the game sooner than I expected. Um, and, you know, this this is the test to what I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It pays to not get games at launch. Yes. Uh, like Gotham Knight. Yeah. If you get it now, it's only $30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, It Takes Two is $15.99 on Steam. I think I'm going to get that. Yeah. I'm going to save that for later. Uh, and that's all that they have on their front page. Uh, I'm sure there's more. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order was is not on the front page, yeah. and and I found that. Oh my god, Battlefield Five is five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Steam's having a big sale that ends in two. Oh my god, Cult of the Oh no, it's a pack. That's a DLC pack. Cult of the Lamb Cultist pack is three seventy four. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, you, it ends in two days, so. Oh, uh, I'm just reading more of the Hitman press release. Okay. If you own any of the DLC already, mm-hmm. but you're missing some, you will be able to buy it at a reduced price. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Which uh, is good because I am missing some DLC. Celeste is five bucks. That's a must have. Mm-hmm. Um, Monster Hunter Rise is also on Steam. I forgot about that. And it is $20. So that's kind of a really big deal. Yes. Yeah. Also, there's this game ready or not that I want to try. It looks like old rainbow six. Oh, uh that's 30 bucks but that, that's not that big of a of a deal but uh I'm oh yeah, yeah yeah i've seen this game. i saw the trailer because i was like oh this is the game that's like rainbow six right and i watched the trailer and it looked like a horror game and i was like what <laughs> also midnight suns didn't that just come out it's 40 dollars. Yeah, damn steam doesn't give a shit you know what i've actually been playing a lot recently and like this is way off topic but we're talking about like games for free and whatnot mm-hmm. The Netflix games you get with your Netflix subscription? Oh, God. No. Like, how, do see- you, how do you play it? So it, it's the dumbest thing ever because they have to go through Apple's stupid draconian system. Mm-hmm. But you go into Netflix. Okay. You go into the Netflix app on your phone. You go to the game section. Mm-hmm. And you, you scroll through the games that are available. You click it. You click the game. And it'll take you to the app store to download that the Netflix version of the game. Okay. And so... You download it and you open the, the app. It verifies your Netflix account and then you have access to the full game. And it's like actual well-known, they're like they're indie games, but they're well-known indie games like Kentucky Route Zero or 12 oh. Minutes or Breach and Clear. You know, Breach game, and Clear's on there? Yeah. Breach and Clear's very good. So like that's what I'm talking about. If Microsoft doesn't want to pay like AAA studios for their games, do that. Give us like the the higher end indie games, you mm-hmm. know, like Kentucky Route Zero, like Twelve Minutes, you know, games like that. Like that will get people interested, and it's getting me interested in playing these games. So I'm finally playing Kentucky Route Zero. You're playing them on your phone. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you you're downloading them from the App Store. Yes. But it registers it with Netflix. You're, with your net, you log in with your Netflix account in the game. In the game. It verifies your Netflix account. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. That makes a little bit of sense. Because I guess some of these games have like a free version that like 
in the game you use an in-app purchase to unlock the rest of it yeah but instead of doing that you just log in with if, you, if you look on the app icon it actually has the red n in the corner for the netflix version mm. so like they're like they did have to upload a second version of the oh, game Oh, okay that makes yeah. a little more sense that's kind of cool <laughs> yeah i'm not opposed yeah no it's it's stupid that they have to do it that way mm. but it's a fun idea and it's a neat system so netflix is trying a lot of things to expand because yes. they're a capitalist their their country and they're they're a company in a capitalist country right a little alliteration it's hard mm -hmm. they have to expand every year or else they're failing yes and they've already expanded as big as they can be in a movie company you yes. know be it be in the way that you watch mm -hmm. stuff every single person their mother has it already yeah. uh so they've expanded into video games mm-hmm we've been shitting all over them because yeah. they've been doing a terrible job that seems like a good way to like use your netflix subscription for other services yes That's cool. like what amazon does yes i amazon feel like does that. amazon netflix is doing it very well mm -hmm. they're dipping they're clearly just dipping their toes in the water they're not going all in like amazon does immediately but they're do they're doing it smart they're offering they're not offering triple a stuff but they're starting on mobile which everybody has a phone and they're offering higher end well-known content right available and also like stranger things stuff because of <laughs> course um but yeah i think i think this is a good step i think this i think they i think they could actually get a foothold in gaming now in some way here's another problem this year they announced that they're not going to have these shared uh passwords anymore yes so what's that well, how's that, that going to work you got to get your own netflix account i just won't <laughs> I don't. I never watch it. I honestly might just downgrade to the standard definition one because it is too much fucking money every yeah. year, every month. I the only one I use now is Disney Plus because yeah. I, I just want to watch the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, yeah. So also, Andor takes six or seven episodes for anything to happen. Are you up to the prison episodes yet? Uh, I just got to the prison ep to, to. He's the, in jail. Those are the best episodes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I then, literally it literally just happened. And then the finale is pretty good too. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, the prison episodes are the best episodes. That's not a spoiler because Disney Plus spoiled it for me because I was half of the thumbnail season a jumpsuit. The, the goddamn Star Wars Twitter account, yeah, just posts pictures of you know Cassie and Andor in his jumpsuit standing right next to non CGI Andy Circus. <laughs> yeah, like he's in the show. And he's not a cartoon character? Who is he? I saw that. I yeah. saw that on, on Twitter, and I also saw it on the Star Wars subreddit. They're yeah. usually good at, like, hiding spoilers, but uh, I think there's, like, a two-week cap on spoilers. And yeah. then I, you just see a million pictures of him in a jumpsuit. And I'm like, all right, I guess he's going to be in fucking jail. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, what are you talking about? The heist is a banger? Yeah, it takes. it's the sixth episode when they yeah. do the heist. Anyway. Uh... So predictions for this year. How about a big one? Netflix not going to do too hot. <laughs> Netflix going to lose a lot of money this yeah. year. Well, they have. I've been listening. Netflix to, is going to do something weird and wacky this year. I've been listening to um, podcasts on, on uh, The Verge had a podcast on like all the different streaming platforms and how they're doing. Okay. And Netflix, since they revamped how they calculate what, whether or not a show is a success, has seen of an increase in revenue. Because they're basically like... You know they're not they're not trying to accumulate um, subscribers anymore because they've done that already. Yeah, they're just trying to figure out who is watching what mm -hmm. and how much revenue is that actually generating for the company. Okay, so and that's been a success for them because they're not spending you know two hundred million dollars for every single director that comes to their. their yeah, door. yeah, they don't yeah. need. Yeah, they spend too much. Yeah, stop spending. We are you already have our money. Yeah, you know. But now they're gonna call half of their audience by yeah, taking away. Yeah, but I think I think they're I think they're the type of company. I mean, because they're they're the oldest at this game. Mm -hmm. They've been doing this for a long time. They know how this game works better than literally all the other companies out there doing this. So they they know how to like hedge their bets and like if they need to purge some subscribers to regrow the platform. They'll do it because they know that will work. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Anyway, what other wacky and weird ga weird gaming predictions do we have for the year? I think so. There's a lot of games coming out this year. Yeah. 
Uh, last year, we started off the year, mm -hmm. and we and I have a video where I talk about all the games coming out in 2023 for the or in 2022. Mm -hmm. All the games coming out in 2022 for the Nintendo Switch. I have a video. And in that video, there's a lot of fucking games. And I say, this might be the best year ever for the Nintendo Switch. Right. There's so much good shit coming out. Half of those games got delayed. <laughs> uh, ended up not being that big of a deal. Right. I think this year, same shit's going to happen. I think we're going to have a lot of stuff that's delayed. Yeah. Zelda, going to happen. Yes. That's that that, happen. Whatever the date is, it's coming that day. Otherwise... I'm not sure. I think a lot of the stuff that's slated for this year might have an issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, are you pulling up game releases? Because that's what I'm doing. Uh, I should. I was actually uh, just about to say my prediction. It's say a, your prediction then. All right. It's a. It's a, It's my oh, predictions are oh, forespoken. Is that supposed to be January 24th? That's that supposed got to delayed. be soon. Yeah. No, that got that super got delayed. Forespoken's gonna not be good. <laughs> I've been saying that. For yeah, a while. I feel bad, but release date January twenty fourth. Are you serious? No, I thought it got delayed. Huh? Wow. Okay. All right. Good luck. All right. All right. So here's what I think. Okay. We said I said this last time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get more specific. Okay. Later this year, mm -hmm. later this year, Nintendo is going to unveil, not launch, not release, but they're going to unveil the successor to the switch okay it will have an improved joy con it'll be backwards compatible with the old one but it'll have improved joy cons so that they will there will be no drift they've they'll fix it it's, yeah okay it will not be a 4k system right but it will be powerful enough to do 1080p 60 in both handheld and docked across all games I agree with everything you just said. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure about the 1080p handheld. You don't think so? Um, I'm just not sure how necessary it is. Well, because they, they got to do something yeah. to show that this system is more powerful than the previous system. Right. And I feel like we're at a point where a 1080p 60 handheld device yeah. isn't that hard to create and release mm -hmm. as opposed to really trying to push for a 4k uh game there device. just aren't that many 1080p handhelds and the ones that exist are pretty expensive the, right. the only one that uh i can think of that the only one that i can think of that is comparable that is something that Nintendo could draw some inspiration from is the Logitech G Cloud. Right. That has a 1080p screen and mm -hmm. it is a very nice screen. Right. It's also pretty big. Yeah. Uh, but even like the Steam Deck, it's an 800p screen. Okay. So it's 720p but 16 by 10. Right. Uh, Nintendo might do a wacky resolution. Okay. That's possible. Yeah. It could be like a 900p screen or yeah. something. I just don't see 1080 being necessary for 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 them it's not necessary but i think like i said i mean it's obviously going to be more powerful yeah it's gonna you it's, know, a, it's a spec on the data sheet yeah but i don't know how much nintendo cares about the spec on the data sheet like like they do want to show that this thing's more powerful than yeah. the previous one but <laughs> when when you're holding the fucking thing like yeah. it really isn't that big of a deal to to to, to have a, a screen that's that small yeah. that's 720p instead of 1080 they could do a big fat screen maybe. well i think i think it's important too because i think a lot of people have heard that like handheld mode this resolution gets shrunk down considerably especially with like, like games like the witcher what's that like 300p in handheld mode yeah no it's really it, it small gets, it gets really so if, they ha if you have a device that's capable of doing up to 1080p 60 in handheld mode people are going to see that and they're going to see that okay i'm going to get a better gaming experience yeah. in a handheld mode than i did the previous generation right and look again this is not going to be able to play like uh the latest and greatest games it's still going to be like a generation behind but it'll be much closer yeah than what the switch was yeah we're at the end of the switch's rope it needs we need a little more out yeah. of the switch 
Uh, Metascension says Ein Odin is 1080p too. No, uh, you're right. I just looked it up and it is. Yeah. You can't fucking tell at all because that screen's so <laughs> tiny. Yeah. It's bigger than like the Retroid. Bits. Well, the Switch OLED has like a pretty big screen. So I imagine yeah. they're going to carry that over. When you compare the OLED to the original, you can start to see how big the pixels are. Yeah. Because like, it, it, it's substantially bigger screen, but the resolution is the same. Right. Um. So, yeah, I, I, I think that a lot of people are putting a lot of stock into this uh, uh, Nintendo Switch uh, Pro yeah. situation or whatever the next Switch is going to be. They, mm-hmm. There's all this brand new technology that could work really well in a handheld. We're seeing a lot of uh, like Windows devices like the I and Neos and stuff mm-hmm. utilizing all of these types of technology to force them into a handheld. They're pretty expensive. Um I don't see Nintendo giving a shit about any of this yeah. stuff. I think that they're just going to have a Switch that's better. Yeah. You know? It's 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 going to be more powerful, but it's not going to be groundbreaking at all. I, I, it, it, people started talking about the hardware limitations recently because of games like Pokemon because right. it's running like shit. It's not the Switch's fault. It's Pokemon's right. fault. That game... Definitely doesn't have to run like shit like yeah. that. But uh, what else? Like, it, it makes sense that there's games that are on these other platforms that cannot play on the Switch. Like, Elden Ring runs pretty good on a Steam Deck, not going to run good on a Switch. So how could we get a developer like From Software to want to put something yeah. on a Switch? I don't think Nintendo gives a shit about that. No. Well, I think they do to a point because, like, you know, having games like Doom and Skyrim and The Witcher, you know, that was a big boon for the system. Like, that that got people excited for it. So, I think they do kind of like the idea of having, like, these big third-party games on their system. Mm-hmm. And I think it would behoove them to be able to help and offer resources to get uh, games onto the Switch. Okay. I think, you know, I think the Switch taught them a lot on, on not only how to, you know, cultivate relationships with developers... Mm-hmm. But also like how to cultivate a relationship with the audience. One of the one of the the theories as to why they haven't unveiled you know what the next system is yet is because they don't want to have a Wii U situation. What was that? Where they announced the Wii U, but everyone was confused by what it was, oh, right. and eventually nobody bought it. Right, right, right. So they want to avoid that as much as possible. Well, that is an extenuating circumstance because it looked like an addition to the Wii. Right. I think what they're gonna do. Is later this year they're going to do like what they did with the Switch. They're going to come out with a commercial for it that shows you everything it does, shows you the system, it shows you everything it does. It's going to then say like releasing sometime next year, and they're gonna. Oh, I hit a button. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no! Why did it do, Why is it doing that? Oh, what do you, What did you do? I I <clears throat> it, it, it it hit the wrong button. <laughs> Never mind continue they're gonna have like they're gonna have a little commercial showing all everything the new switch can do and then like they're gonna have two press conferences like yeah. they well last time they had just the one where they unveiled what this more about what the system was and the games coming out with it right they're gonna do two okay they're gonna do one this is a you're going into detail they're gonna do one where they show you the system and all its new features and all the new gimmicks that you're not gonna use and they're <laughs> gonna show uh they're gonna show like third party games they're going to do another one that's going to show first party games and they're going to sh- unveil a revamped Nintendo Switch online system. That's yes. It's still going to, you know, still going to have to pay for it, but they're going to get rid of the app. You can talk it, you can talk on the system like you can like any other system. Um it's going to have better cloud save support. All games will be cloud saved. I I don't you, you said get rid of the app. They're going to have an app. It's They're going to have an app. It's just not going to be yeah. as shitty as yeah. it is now. But it's still going to suck. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. still going to suck. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're, they're going to have some sort of backwards compatibility. Yeah. They're, they need to join the 21st century yeah. and have an account system that... Yeah is you know just a they're, nintendo they're gonna system. do that in a very nintendo way yeah that's gonna sound good at first yeah and then the more you read into it the more you realize like certain things aren't gonna count. there's over. gonna be a couple things that are gonna suck about yeah. it but for the most part i think that games that you have on the switch that you bought on uh, digitally will 
carry over or, yeah. or a lot of them will i'm not sure if all of them are going to yeah uh because supposedly they've been working with dna to make an account system that's yeah. why they like kind of brought dna into their building yeah. or whatever um like a week ago was it uh digital foundry did a little podcast and they uh one of them said that they know developers that have gotten a Switch uh, Pro like yeah. uh, development unit, um, and I've also heard of developers getting a development unit that was something that could have been a Switch Pro. Yeah, uh, but it didn't happen. So it, it never released. This was years ago. Well, this has been a thing for a while. Again, it's because you know Nintendo doesn't know how to unveil it yet. They yeah. don't because they don't want a Wii U situation. Yeah. So well, this was supposedly an iteration, right? You know, but also like development units have better RAM and stuff yeah. than regular units, so it's still who knows what that yeah. really was, you know? Unless I had it in my freaking hands, only mm. the developers really know what what it was capable of, right? Uh, some people were saying 4K. I have no evidence of that <laughs> at all. I think it's really just a Switch Pro development unit. People put 4K in their heads and yeah. like ran with it um i don't know and people are always saying that the switch pro is the thing that's going to have like a, a a dock that does you know upscaling in some way or, yeah. or d d gives some power to the switch i still don't think nintendo would even no do that it would be a, it would be a lot and you know yeah. nintendo you know classically has done a lot with very little yeah so exactly the gamecube is like the only system they released that was like the gamecube and the n64 were the only systems they released that were like then modern technology yeah no i i it kind of makes sense because when you're in portable mode you don't need that much power because the screen's right. only 720p and then you put it on a dock you're gonna need some more power so mm -hmm. having the dock actually do something makes a little bit of sense yeah but uh what the dock does is it just gives it power to, right. like, like it it makes it so that the switch is nerfing itself when it's in portable mode because it doesn't want to drain the battery all the way the steam deck i could play i played sonic forces the other day in bed i had 40 percent battery yeah five minutes of sonic forces wow yeah it just yeah and it just it just said saving game and we're shutting down yeah. i was like i didn't know i was even close to shutting down what the hell yeah so the switch is nerfing itself purposely so that in portable mode so that uh, it doesn't drain the battery that quick yeah when you put it in the dock it can let it fly that's why it does yeah. it a higher resolution so i think that could probably be fine for the next generation as well right i agree that it's probably not going to be a 4k situation um but it could be higher it could be 1440 yeah it could go all the way up to that mm -hmm. you know because like i don't think nintendo cares about the spec but they do want to put something yeah they want they want to give people a a, a digestible reason to upgrade yes. to whatever they have coming mm -hmm. so you think it'll be unveiled late this year yes uh the switch was unveiled october yes of 20 the same day as the logan trailer Really? Yes. Oh Don't ask me why I remember that. <laughs> that was 2016. Yes. Uh, I think that timeline checks out. Yeah. I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that Nintendo has historically released consoles all over the year. They don't yeah. give a shit. Like it, PlayStation and Xbox always release their consoles in yeah. November, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Even global pandemic, they don't yeah. give a shit. Uh, Nintendo doesn't care. they are there they've released systems in november but like yeah. you know the switch was march yeah you know the the 3ds i think was also march so they'll release it when it's ready there was some shit that was like january it just yeah. in japan and shit like they don't give a fuck mm -hmm. um so i don't know i mean i think that their plans have certainly been delayed so i don't yeah. know like i think that the timeline of late this year for an unveiling makes a lot of sense but uh I don't know what they're going to hit for a release or anything. You know, yeah. maybe they'll just talk about how they have some. But I mean, it was also a little weird that they announced it in October of 2016 because there goes your holiday. You yeah. Know? You just you just shooting yourself in the foot for the holiday well, season th that year. I think they're, you know, banking on 
you know, whatever success, you know, success the Switch had from Tears of the Kingdom, for that to carry them, that True. to carry them throughout the rest of the year. True. Or maybe they'll have like one final game yeah. for the year. That Metroid Prime Four announced, and then that'll be their holiday hit, and then. Right. Yeah, I. I. I I, I I agree with that timeline. I just think that something had to have been delayed, and I think that uh, a, a lot of people are saying 2024, and I think that makes yeah. that makes sense. Um, anyway, there's also people are talking about like DLSS for the Switch and stuff, and like getting that sort of upscaling. Well, because it, that's an Nvidia thing, right? Yeah, and, and, and it, it will the probably, Switch runs on a Tegra. So. Yeah, so. There, there exists like chipsets that will just do upscaling and yeah. that kind of makes sense and it's possible maybe that could be the thing in the dock that yeah. makes it 4k or 1440p um but i don't think we're getting like a USB-C graphics card in the fucking dock. no no not um that. so i don't know and you also said uh upgraded joy cons yeah you said backwards compatible. What is it? So you the can use games your, or the Joy Cons? The Joy. You can use your old Joy Cons on the new Switch. Okay. But the new Switch is going to come with brand new design Joy Cons. Right. That will feel better in the hands, no matter if you play it in portable mode or connected together or whatnot. Right. Um, the joysticks will be better, so that they don't drift as easily. Um, they will not redesign the D-pad, <laughs> but I. But think they might, but they will make it better. Um, they will make it a better design so that it can work as both a traditional D pad and a sideways. Joy-Con. Oh, you know what? That's a good point because yeah. uh, it does have to be split so that you can have two people playing on one console. Yes. So yeah, having a traditional D pad doesn't really make much sense. Yeah. But I mean, they did give you a D pad on the Switch Lite. It's true. Yeah, but that, but you can't play two yeah. people on the same console. So. Uh yeah, I think uh I think they have to redesign the Joy Cons. Oh, they have yeah because of the drift, but also because if they change the design of the Switch at all, the Joy Con like even the like the 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 ratio the, mm-hmm. the the size of the Switch, the Joy Cons won't fit. If they right. change the height at all, it's 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 fucked. Yeah. So uh, I think that it might not be backwards compatible i think i think mm. you might be able to connect to your joy con but with no that's Bluetooth? too complicated i think that it won't be backwards compatible with old joy con i think you might be screwed because if they change the design at all you won't be able to slot in well i mean well, i think you could it depends on it depends on like because they can't make it smaller than a joy con right they can make it bigger than a joy con and it would just look weird like it would look like those you know, bigger screens you can get for the Switch yeah. and whatnot. It'll, it'll look funky, but like it, it could still work. True, true. I think the only way it wouldn't it wouldn't work is if the thickness of the Switch changed. I think that's where you run into problems. I don't think they will would go thicker. Yeah. Um, but also I don't think they would change the aspect ratio. I think the screen will always be sixteen by nine. Yeah. Uh. But the 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 height of the thing might change that's yeah. that's all all i'm saying and i don't know i mean i think the oled is like the perfect ratio the yeah. screen the, 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 the screen to, to to bezel ratio is like good yeah i don't know what else they could they could do besides that situation but they right. have to make the joy cons different so that it looks like a different thing yeah you know they got to make a whole new damn system also you know they are being sued so they want they are being sued yeah. i mean yeah, the, the 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 biggest way to go about that is to put Hall Sensing sticks in there, but yeah. that's assuming that Nintendo like R and D's it and like determines that that's a good option because right. everybody's going nuts about Hall Sensing sticks right now. All the ones I've seen from all these companies, specifically like Gully Kit, yeah, they have a little bit of sensitivity issues. Like right. they're not like perfect, so they they might not drift, uh, they might not yeah. break for a while, but like. They're they're still not, but it's also like Gully Kit's making them. It's not right. like Ninten- if Nintendo's making it, they're make, going to make a perfect one. Yeah. So I'm not sure what technology they're going to utilize to mm-hmm. make sure that it doesn't drift. Um, otherwise, if you want to go into wacky wild gaming predictions, 
uh, last year, 2022, there were a surprising amount of handhelds released. Yes. Uh, we got the Steam Deck. We got mm-hmm. the... Uh, 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 we got the play date. We got the analog pocket kind of released yeah. pretty late. Uh, and we got all these portable emulator things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also got the Logitech G Cloud, which is like a mainstream version yeah. of a portable emulator, which was kind of ridiculous. I think that's already carrying over until this year. There's still shit coming out. Yeah. Uh, I think it's potential that another big player is going to drop it. Oh, we have the the Razer one. The Razer oh, one's yeah. coming out this year. I think that it's potential that another big player is going to drop in mm-hmm. and it will uh, hit. It'll it'll be I don't want to say mainstream because like even the Steam Deck's not really mainstream, you know? Yeah. But like I feel like there's going to be one of these handhelds that's kind of like a retro handheld that will release that will somebody like you would be interested in. Right. You know? Well, I think they already have like things like that, like the Evercade. That's like a retro handheld. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, it doesn't have the top of the line stuff, but it's a lot of, like a good selection of cult classics on there. You know, games like Bad Dudes or Chips Challenge or things like that. Like that appeals to a very small niche, mm-hmm. but it's a niche that like loves this medium and like games like like weird older games like that. Mm-hmm. So, I just think something's gonna happen. That's gonna make all of those retro handhelds uh, uh, worth it right. to normal people. Yeah, maybe something will happen with. All it really takes is for Android to get more mainstream games. If, right. If 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 like you know like Celeste dropped for Android, you know like. Mm-hmm. Or, or or whatever their next game is, or even like friggin' Hades. If Hades dropped yeah. for Android, and you could just play the fucking game on Android. Then uh, all of a sudden, the Logitech G Cloud is a lot more worth it. You yeah. know, I mean, you can play all these games on Linux. Mm-hmm. You know, and they work great on the Steam Deck. So I think something weird and wacky with like handheld gaming is going to happen that's going to make all of this stuff worth it yeah. but all it takes is a player like logitech or razor or somebody to start shaking things up and getting more developers interested in 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 developing for those types of handhelds right. specifically android ones i think going along those lines mm-hmm. of like the portable gaming market like explode hold on a kid at heart says nokia no <laughs> <laughs> It's too it's a little too it's late. Very for late for them. Engage 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it'd be 3.0 because 2.0 was a web service. No, no. Yeah. I know my history. Along those lines of like the portable gaming market booming and a major player entering. Mm-hmm. I believe that 2023, and I know I'm wrong at this, but <laughs> Sony will re enter the portable gaming market. Okay, the, yeah. The, I don't know about that one. The place it'll be the PlayStation, whatever. Um, it will, it'll have all the, it'll say all the right words in the press release, you know, great screen, great battery life, um, you know, all the like new wacky features and stuff plays, uh, PlayStation four quality graphics, uh, can seamlessly connect with the PlayStation five, all PlayStation five developed games will have a PlayStation portable version of it. So you can take it on the go. You can, you know, cross save between the two, cross buy for every game. It will sound like the the dream where like you have the game on your PS5 and then you take it on the go on your new PlayStation portable device. The system will have one critical flaw <laughs> that will sync the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know what that flaw is going to be because it's not something you know until you see it in your hands. Yeah. Because like the PSP, Sounded great. Sounded like it was it was gonna kill the, the DS dead in its tracks. But it ran on disc, which was not an optimal medium for a portable system. Yeah, and then you like tilt it and the whole yeah. game crashes. So that like kind of sucked. I mean it did very well, but it kind of like ruined the experience. Yeah. The PlayStation Vita. Everybody loves the Vita. Not a mainstream success because it was too damn expensive. Yeah. And the AAA games they put out all sucked. Also lied about uh every game yes every playstation 3 game yes. working on that the vita too. i think 
Well, I think one of the reasons why I'm saying like play, PS5 games will work on this new system is because now they're working with x86 architecture, which mm-hmm. is a much more well-known yeah. system style. So they can easily like transfer it to like a different device. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's there's gonna be something about it that like they're gonna get wrong. It's not out of the realm of possibility for for PlayStation to do something that is similar to a Steam Deck. Yeah, it'll cost a lot of money. Yeah, probably be like five hundred bucks. Yeah, it'll be a premium device. It'll be big and ugly. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they do but, something like that. You know, it being expensive and it being big and ugly will not be the critical flaws because the Steam Deck is expensive and big and ugly, and that's doing just fine. Yeah. Uh, also, Woods in the chat. Hello. Oh, hey. He says, I love... Oh, no. I love what you're doing with that little monitor. That looks like... Thanks, dude. <laughs> I was afraid to hit it because the cable is oh, so yeah. finicky. Uh, Wood also says, Oh, my God. It's my favorite currently ongoing podcast. Do you get it? Yeah, I get yeah, it. Because we're not doing the Nintendo. Uh, we're not doing the Nintendo because there's nothing to fucking talk about. <laughs> oh. But, uh, listen. I think that uh, PlayStation has right now they have the, the you 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 they have like a sort of remote play you can play on like an android phone or whatever the phone yeah is. and you can do remote play on the vita if you still have your vita it doesn't it sucks so, so i don't sucks. i don't think you can remote play on a phone with the playstation app i think you need a third party app to do it i think you might need to do it through the web browser oh that's why you need a third party app yeah then. Yeah, it doesn't fucking work right yeah. at all. Like it's it's not well, like having Game Pass. If they can create their own device, yeah, that like lets you stream all your PS5 games, I think that would say solve a lot of headaches for a lot of people. It has a the PlayStation has very similar issues to Nintendo. Not as bad as Nintendo, yeah. but they'll have some weird wacky account situations yeah. that just sucks. Or as we've seen currently issues. with PS4 and PS5 upgrading games. Yeah, that was a pain <clears> in the ass. Uh, even buying games on a playstation 5 you gotta i mean i don't know if it's like this now but when the playstation 5 came out you had to be careful not to buy the playstation 4 version yeah. of the game even I've though heard you're they, on your fucking playstation 5 i've heard they made that clearer but still you should it shouldn't be possible it just shouldn't be possible to buy a playstation 4 version yeah. while you're on playstation 5 unless it's like super cheap for some reason um but yeah i think that playstation has kind of had some issues with making hardware yeah especially lately yeah uh the playstation 5 uh is most popular console right now yeah uh not the most well-made <laughs> no it's gigantic it sounds like a jet you know we also have the great specs of playstation vr and that's coming out this year yes it's coming out actually pretty soon it's coming mm-hmm. out in february um so that's why i'm a little i don't know about this year and making a portable console well maybe they'll do like the, what i said the Nintendo would do with the switch they'll announce it this year and then release it very late next year. That'll be directly competing against Nintendo. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure they want to compete that hard with them. I think they w- I mean, I think they would because I think they're on this high horse okay. between like PS4 and PS5 mm-hmm. as we've seen throughout like their actions. What I wanted to say when we were talking about the PlayStation Plus games this this month, mm-hmm. uh how are they going to sit there and take a Bethesda game and release it for free and talk about how Microsoft's oppressing them? Yeah. <laughs> That's not good for their case. Yeah. You know? I actually really have to pee, so go, if you want to take go the ahead. next prediction. I'm going to read some notifications. How about that? Uh, uh, where did we leave off? Uh, where, where am I? Blackbird? Yeah, Blackbird. Thanks for the nine months. Hey, Wolf Bros. Have you seen slash do you have any thoughts on Sonic Prime? I watched what is out and like it. I haven't seen anything about it. So no, I got I got no thoughts. Captain Potts, thanks for the thirty one months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More farming games. More farming games. Does lawn mowing simulator count? Because that's free on on Amazon Prime. Uh, Ladybug Leroy, thanks for the hundred and one bits. And Dark Type, thanks for the hundred bits. Proposed names for the successor to the Switch. Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch, but with a two just haphazardly shoved in the middle of the word Switch. Nintendo Switcheroo. <laughs> Nintendo Switch U. Nintendo 3D Switch XL. Okay, I hate all of those. Those are all very bad, but thank you for the 100 bits. Ladybug Leroy, thanks for the 400 bits. 
Uh, Sprokesk, thanks for the 24 months. Cheers to you guys. Thank you. And T-Bird, thanks for the three months. Does Xbox or Nintendo ever go in on VR? If so, when? Uh, there's rumors about Nintendo doing some sort of VR situation. I don't think they give a shit at all. I don't even think it's in it's in development or 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 even being thought about. Even though they did, I mean, they did some stuff with Labo, but I don't think they care. I don't think that's their wheelhouse. Nintendo it's, VR. Yeah, it's a little too complicated for them. Yeah, I think if anything, they would just stick with like the Labo type stuff. Although I don't know, because like Google canceled cardboard, so they're not even doing stuff like that anymore. I feel like, uh. VR is not the future that we once thought. No. I, I kind of understand what Meta is doing. Like yeah. how Mark Zuckerberg is just just laying waste to his company. Yeah. Because he thinks that in the future VR will be a big deal. I think that that future is like 15 years out. Yeah. And they're going to fucking just, just bleed money for a really long time. Uh, and I don't, I still don't think it's going to be like something. It's that, not like, going to be what he thinks that it's going to be. And I don't think it's worth, I don't think it's something Nintendo is going to want any part of. No, no. Nintendo is going to want, if Nintendo is going to do VR, they're going to make video games like they have been. Yeah. They're not going to do, they're not going to have like an office space where you have your morning meeting with your boss. Mm-hmm. No. Nintendo's utilization will be something like AR, like with Pokemon Go yeah. and and uh, uh, Pikmin and yeah. and, and, and the, the the stuff they did with their phone, or you know, I think that's the extent of of Nintendo entering the. Space. I can see them do like a, like a Metroid Prime VR experience, like not a whole game, right. but like you know a, a level where you're in Samus's visor. Right. I think they could do something like that. True. Yeah, like little little mm-hmm. tiny experiences, but that's not where they where they live. Yeah, uh, I think. PlayStation's trying, and I also don't think that's where PlayStation's at. I, no. I, I think that they have. I think that the PlayStation VR two is going to be really cool. It's going to be very powerful. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a little fucking bulky and, and weird in some yeah. aspects, but uh, I think it's going to play games really well. And I think the games. I think it's going to have a high resolution. It's going to be mm-hmm. fun to play. It's a little expensive, but I don't think like your friends are all going to jump into VR to play the next you know a call of duty or yeah. like you're not gonna jump into vr and like hang out you know like that's not i don't think i i think it's specific players in the vr space are gonna utilize it for for gaming like like right. oculus i think is makes sense because yeah. it's just the headset you throw it on and that's it you know uh i i think playstation they're big players in just home console entertainment and like yeah shoehorning vr into that isn't gonna pay off i don't know i don't think um so no i don't think nintendo or even xbox i mean xbox tried too with augmented reality they they and and i thought that was a better idea yeah than 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 something like uh like playstation vr well they have hololens but that's more for like that's more for like business and industry that's not a consumer grade device well all of these things are going to be incredibly expensive until they make them cheaper like meta isn't going to make any money at all until your glasses that you're wearing right now just so happen to also have like a phone in there which you know i'll admit if they can put all that crap in my regular glasses Mm -hmm. then yeah have my money i will buy that for like a grand for like a grand if you can like see little minecraft guys running around yeah that's pretty fucking cool i will buy the second or third generation of that device (laughs) make sure it works mind you but yeah i would love to just tap a button and i get all this information about all the stuff around me yeah like imagine if you're like like think about like uh how google lens works or or like google translate Mm -hmm. where you can hold it in front of something and it'll change the text yeah imagine if that's in your fucking glasses i know you just you're just in japan (coughs) walking around you go what's that say oh oh okay (laughs) or you don't even hit anything it just does it yeah you're just walking around everything's in english yeah that's crazy but that's the future i would love that ar yeah and that's when meta will finally be worth something yeah and that's gonna be way out there yeah uh but for games i don't think that's something we're gonna really be no nope. inter- i'm not i'm not trying to shit on vr games because there's plenty of great vr yeah, games v- but i just think that playstations they're not they're not in that space yeah it's it's it's, it's for other people i think i think they're definitely trying because they, they see it as a future yeah but whether or not it's the future is gonna depend on a lot of things i, I just don't think it's their future yeah. and, and and it's going to be utilized differently like 
we 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 can't really think about it right now because games the way we play them right now yeah. don't really fit in in the in the in the in the VR space. You have mm-hmm. to think of games completely differently. Same thing with AR. Like yeah. people like to use Pokemon Go as like an example of augmented reality because like you hold the phone out and you yeah, see you but- see the Pokemon in the world but you can turn it off and it really has no bearing on whether or not Yeah, you're- that's not really a, like the most AR like that game actually is is you know the geolocation. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. The actual augmented reality part of the game is that you go to a specific location to in the yeah. real world to go play it. That's the type of future of yeah. augmented reality and 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 moving around a physical space to play a game. You yeah. know, and all of those technologies shoved together will be the future yes. of virtual reality and augmented reality gameplay. It's just we don't have a concept for all of those things meshing together yet. And we don't even know what's going to work a few months from now. Maybe yeah. there'll be some concepts that get thrown in that work well. So we were saying all that because PlayStation usually doesn't do good with hardware. Right. <laughs> they the usually con- something whack. Console-wise, sure. But I... I I don't know why the PlayStation Five was successful. It's like it's like people just just they heard new PlayStation and they were like, yeah. "Oh, here's some money." Yeah, you know, it's not like the system was any good when it fucking came right. out. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's but there's potential for them to do something portable. But I think that people are just kind of leaving it to Nintendo, and I think that's why other people are stepping up, like like Valve. Yeah, Valve's like, we could do it. Yeah. Like we have a cool idea. No one else is in the space but Nintendo, mm-hmm. and we don't want to compete directly with them. We can, yeah. we can go for like an older audience or whatever, people who have PCs already. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know about PlayStation entering that sort of space. I don't know if they're gonna feel like it's worth it. Anyway, uh, what did we do for? What did we say? We said a uh, new Nintendo Switch, right, being announced yes. this year. We, I said, uh. Some weird stuff's gonna happen in portable handhelds, like yeah. like with these other things. Maybe Android gaming will start to become more of a thing, or yeah. maybe some other big player is gonna enter it that will uh, shake things up. If PlayStation released a handheld and it ran on Android, that would be fucked up. That would be. If anybody, actually, no. Mike, why would Microsoft do that? It would just be Windows. Yeah. Um. I think it's possible that Microsoft might partner with... They already partnered with Logitech. Yeah, I think if anything, they would keep that... Well, I don't know, because they're trying to make Game Pass like the thing. I think some big thing's going to happen between Nintendo and Microsoft. That would be too. I think... It's going to be weird. It's not going to be just Game Pass on the fucking Switch. I have a whole story. Okay. Okay. So, the Microsoft uh, Activision acquisition will not go through. Okay, the FTC, that's a wacky. The FTC and the the UK equivalent will, will strike it down for whatever reason, and Sony will be happy about it because they had a hand in stopping that. The day after the FTC says this cannot go through, the day after Microsoft will announce a partnership with Nintendo to not only put Game Pass on Nintendo devices, but to have NES and SNES Switch Online games available on game pass that would that would be fucking wild that would be wild but it there's is no way nintendo will give up their there, shit for other consoles the, there's the, no way you are right however however a this will be a clear shot back at sony them saying okay you don't want to play nice with us we'll play nice with the other big japanese video game company two microsoft is willing to spend 70 billion dollars to buy activision blizzard king according to phil spencer it's mostly to buy king which i don't believe yeah no that's ridiculous so if they're willing to spend 70 billion dollars to buy activision blizzard why not spend less than half of that convincing nintendo to just put super mario brothers on xbox for a little bit (laughs) (laughs) like a day or two yeah Enough to show people that there's camaraderie in the gaming space. People are willing to play nice. Yeah. Microsoft is willing to play nice. Yeah. Sony is the one who's not playing nice. I, we've been saying that Sony's the one who's not playing nice for many years. Yes. Uh, and 
do you think they'd be able to convince a court of that? That Sony's not playing nice? Yeah. Because we know that they're that they're not playing nice. I mean, it would behoove them to do that. Yeah. I mean, they have all this evidence towards it. Mm-hmm. But I think they're more... It's so weird. They're just more interested at at like looking like a victim right now and like trying to be you know do we have an article about this we do well we have two actually one about the acquisition directly and one about um sony exclusives not coming to place to xbox anytime soon i moved uh, i I moved it around a little bit okay uh before we get into that uh first of all push your mic your your the the yeah that the the look at the side of it the Oh yeah, yeah. This it pops up. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you okay? I don't think. I think the FTC acquisition. I I I think the Microsoft acquisition of Activision will go through in America because we have no control over major corporations here. Right. I think in the UK it will not go through. Okay. And something weird's gonna have to happen where like the company is broken up in the UK only. So like we're gonna have Microsoft but, Activision stuff, and then the UK is gonna have like different names for things. But how can they do that if all of the companies are are like American based? They're gonna be released in the UK in like weird ways. There's gonna be weird shit. So, like, does that mean Sony gets to distribute Call of Duty in the UK? Like, potentially. Like, okay. shit like that might happen. It won't be Sony, but it'll be, like, like a weird, like, yeah. like publisher is going to end up publishing certain games right. or, or, or something like, like that. Or, like, the UK offices will have to be, you know, under a different arm. Yeah. There's going to be weird regulatory shit going on. But I think here in America, that fucking acquisition is going through no matter okay. what. Because they seem so confident in it. You know? Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the UK, I feel like they have a handle on things. Yeah. There. <laughs> anyway, uh, Microsoft is... This, this whole court case is very strange. Because, yes. like, Sony <clears throat> is trying to convince the courts that Microsoft's being malicious and they're, like, a big bully. Like, it's a, it, it'd be... One thing, they can just say it's a big company and they're going to create a monopoly. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. If I was a juror, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But they're like, no, they're big meanies and they're holding Call of Duty hostage and we're going to turn into like, Nintendo if that happens. <laughs> and like only Call of Duty. Yeah. They only care about Call of Duty, not the many other valuable IP that Activision has. And, it- and the IPs. That Microsoft is just giving them for free. Yeah. Like Fallout 76. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But Microsoft is also doing weird shit too. Yeah. Because I guess this is just what you do in a court case. They're acting like the victim too all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, f- As Mark Stoller notes uh, in the company's 37-page reply to the FCC lawsuit seeking to block the Activision Blizzard deal uh, includes this laughable passage. Microsoft avers that uh, it lacks knowledge or information sufficient to form a belief as to the truth of the allegations concerning the industry perceptions of Call of Duty and Call of Duty's original release date, or as to the truth of the allegations concerning Call of Duty's launch and typical release schedule and the resources and budget Activision allocates to Call of Duty, including the number of studios that work on Call of Duty. So to summarize, Microsoft is saying that they don't know anything about Call of Duty. <laughs> when it was released, who works on it, like what studios work on I, it. I how, don't know. I've never heard this game money. before in my life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm just a simple country <laughs> software company. I'm not familiar with y'all big fancy city franchises like your call of duties and your what not the cold cold of, oh, cold of bodies and your tony hawks <laughs> and your crash bandicoots crash That's, banda what now in that accent it sounds like a slur yeah everything you said <laughs> i mean it makes sense um and then the article googles when call of duty was originally released <laughs> october 29 2003 so that for what this sounds like to me is that the 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 court was like Call of Duty makes a lot of money 
Yeah. This is clearly uh, going to create a monopoly. Yeah, this is like a big reason why you want to buy this company. And to prove that, they were like, this is how much Call of Duty made. Yeah. And Microsoft was like, where are you getting those numbers yeah. from? We and they're like, everybody knows these numbers. And they're yeah. like, no, you have to prove it because it's a court case. And they're like, no, you can just look it up. Yeah. It's like, don't you know it's worth it? And they're like pretending like they don't know yeah. like, that Call of Duty is a big deal. Uh, according to this article, Activision Blizzard probably coughed up those details as part of the due diligence around the transaction before Microsoft ever announced it would spend $68 billion on the company. Um, but even if that somehow didn't happen, I imagine Microsoft has uh, mounds of opposition, of opposition research. Uh, when when this writer brought the very best and most revealing emails from the Epic first Apple trial, uh, they came across a 67-page document from Microsoft's gaming business planning and strategy team that broke down all of Microsoft's main competitors in quite a number of ways, going so far as to estimate non-public information, like how Sony's PlayStation Now cloud gaming service is pulling $359 million in 2019. Oh my God. So what they're saying is, Microsoft has the ability to research their competitors' cloud streaming service. So what? So why the fuck wouldn't they have the ability to research the company that they're trying to buy? I don't believe that PlayStation Now made three hundred and fifty-nine million in one year. PlayStation Now, yeah, in twenty nineteen, yeah, twenty nineteen. PlayStation Now, yeah. <laughs> doesn't make that doesn't make sense that, they'll probably be ge being generous <laughs> yeah well no they're 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 maybe that's gross and yeah. not net because they they're trying to argue yeah that playstations you know would benefit from this deal not going yeah through, you know so so they're, they're they're trying to skew numbers too yeah so that's why they're 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 like no you tell us how much call of duty made because we don't want to say it yeah you know? it's like you're getting in trouble it's like you're at it's like you're fucking in, yeah in, no in high school you got in trouble for like stealing something yeah and they're like what do you, do you know what's missing you're not gonna tell them <laughs> yeah you're not gonna straight up give show them your cards but i think this is also too goes to like microsoft's whole like public image throughout this trial where they're trying to be like the victim they're trying yeah. to be like the small potatoes in the in the podcast phil spencer repeatedly said that they are the number three console maker in the world and they have been pretty much since the original xbox yeah that is not true <laughs> because in america at least they are the number two uh of the of the original xbox generation and the xbox 360 they were way ahead of playstation for majority of the generation and then only with the xbox one did they go down to third place dramatically mm. so I've rewriting history there, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> There's more yes. news about this, though. Yes. Uh, while you pull that up, though, yes. I will say thank you to Gunpei, ya boy. Ah, uh, thank you for gifting us up. Okay, so Microsoft is now. I don't know if this is part of the case or not, but Microsoft states that Final Fantasy 16 and Silent Hill 2 remakes are not coming to Xbox consoles. So that is. A square situation. Uh, no. Uh, oh. Final Fantasy is square. Silent Hill is Konami. Right. Final Fantasy 16 though is coming to PC six months later. I think. Yes. Well, I thought uh, it was PS5 console exclusive for six months, meaning that it would eventually come to Xbox. But apparently, this article says no. Otherwise. It it made it pretty clear that it was. Oh, you thought that, but I always thought right. they play PC because Sony seems to be fine with releasing stuff on PC. I don't know. Uh, Microsoft has hit back at Sony's objection to its planned acquisition of Activision Blizzard by revealing that third-party games like Bloodborne, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy XVI, and Silent Hill II Remake are party to exclusion agreements that will prevent those games from coming to Xbox consoles. This news came as part of Microsoft's response to the FTC lawsuit against its planned acquisition of Activision Blizzard. In the filing, Microsoft defends its position by turning the spotlight back onto Sony, detailing a handful of prominent games the company alleges have been barred from release on Xbox. Whilst the filing acknowledges that exclusivity strategies are not uncommon in the games industry, Microsoft seems to take issue with Sony's partnerships with third-party publishers, namely From Software, Square Enix, and Konami. 
In addition to having outright exclusive content, Sony has also entered into arrangements with third-party publishers which require the exclusion of Xbox from a set of platforms these publishers can distribute their games on, the paperwork states. Um, these prominent examples, some prominent examples of these arrangements include Final Fantasy V, a Final Fantasy VII Remake from Square Enix, Bloodborne from From Software, the upcoming Final Fantasy XVI, also Square Enix, and the recently announced uh, Silent Hill 2 Remake from Blooper Team. Uh, whilst, whilst there's been quite a bit of push back and forth between the two companies in recent months, this final sentence may come as a bit of bit of a surprise not least because in final fan in sorry in silent hill 2 remakes case for instance whilst we knew there was a 12 month console exclusivity period for sony it was presumed the games would roll out onto other consoles after the exclusivity period is up something xbox intimates is now no longer the case for now there has been no clarification from any of the war warring factions on whether or not we'll see silent hill 2 or Final Fantasy 16 pop up on Xbox Series X, but as always, we'll keep you posted. We will too. <laughs> so yeah, Microsoft sitting back saying like, well, what about all these games that you're keeping from us? Yeah, I think it's pretty egregious that PlayStation has been found to be paying developers to not release on Xbox. Right. It. We talked about this before. It. It. it exclusivity is one thing that's already kind of like a shitty well i anyway. mean exclusivity like you're being like it's you're gonna get paid for exclusivity yeah like microsoft and sony will pay a company for exclusivity yeah it's yeah. just you know sony is still adhering to that mindset from like generations past whereas xbox either doesn't want to or just doesn't care anymore but the thing that is takes it one step further i think is paying a company to just not release on this one platform <laughs> that's like that's like very focused like bullying you know right. like like it kind of makes sense for a game to be exclusive if you like own the if you own the company right like if you're like a fucking sony is making god of war like of right, course obviously. that's only going to come out on on uh on playstation but if you're just a developer sitting there having a good time and then mr sony comes knocking at your door and yeah. is like hey guys I see you're working on a game here's just 20 bucks never talk to phil spencer right you know well, that's a little weird it's in some cases that's the only way for some of these games to get made like i'm like the final fantasy 7 remake is partially funded by sony and that's the only way that game would have gotten made mm -hmm. i'm sure the, the silent hill 2 remake is also partially funded by yeah. sony that's the only way that game would have ever gotten made mm -hmm. so like i get it but at a certain point, like some of these games, like they only they only exist because of the money given to them by the the platform holder. Microsoft. Well, when you put it that way, like that's Sony funding the game, right? Maybe Microsoft is just wording it this way to make it sound worse. Yeah. Wording it in a way like, "Hey, you can release your game anywhere you want, just not Microsoft." Yeah, that's diff. That sounds a lot worse. Yeah. Um. I think Microsoft also thinks very differently about exclusivity now than, than, yeah. than PlayStation oh, definitely, yeah. does. Microsoft's like, whatever, we'll just take the yeah. money for wherever the game releases because we're publishing and we'll just, yeah. uh, we're going to benefit no matter what. And Sony is still very uh, uh, archaic in that way. But I yeah. mean, maybe, maybe they realize somewhere that uh, having their own little walled garden makes them more money. I don't know. Yeah, they, I don't they, know. They, they, there's, hundreds of people in suits whose whole job it is to determine whether or not it's more or less worth it for them to yeah. do business the way they're well, doing Well, I think, you know, because, what, if they get like 30% of sales on a system? Like, if, if you buy a, a game, if you buy a Sony game, if you buy a PlayStation game, if you buy a PlayStation game, Sony gets 30% of the cut, whether you buy it physically or digitally. Mm -hmm. If you buy that same game on Steam, though, I don't think they're getting that big of a cut anymore, because Steam's got to take something. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. So, but see now, that's the dilemma. Do you, I think Microsoft sees that as these people were never going to buy it on a Microsoft console anyway. Right. So here they are buying it. Well, in Microsoft's case, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Let's assume a Nintendo console, because Nintendo is a completely different console. Right. If a Sony published game gets bought on a Nintendo console, uh, Nintendo has to take a cut. Yeah. 
I think Microsoft sees that as we were never going to get that person to buy it on Xbox anyway. So the yeah. fact that it's accessible to them, we'll take the cut. Right. Sony sees that as, no, we want the money. Fuck you. Buy yeah. PlayStation. You know? And right. that's the thing that they, I'm sure they have numbers to figure out whether or not it's more or less worth it for them. Yeah. I think it's more worth, I think Microsoft is the way that they are because they sell less consoles yeah. and they have Windows so they determine that it doesn't matter where these people buy the stuff. Yeah. Sony has a console, so they make money on the console and whatever. So they determine buy a fucking console mm-hmm. because I guess it's easier for people to buy a, a PlayStation console because more people have them. <sighs> anyway. What was this article about? <laughs> uh, s- some games are not coming... Microsoft alleges that some games are not coming to their system because Sony interference. I will also say, mm-hmm. you notice anything about the games they're calling out? Um, Bloodborne, Final Fantasy, Silent Hill 2? What? They're all Japanese games. Oh, yeah. Well, Sony has a lot of Japanese games. Well, Japan is uh, classically a marketplace where Microsoft has struggled. Right. So I think it's very interesting that Sony is... if the, You know, if this is true... Sony is actively trying to keep the Japanese developers from developing on Microsoft platforms to keep their stranglehold in their home country Mm -hmm. and to keep, you know, those dirty Americans out. It's also like if you're in Japan making these decisions, it's what you're thinking about. Yeah. You're thinking about what's around you. Right. You're thinking globally or or at least not as much. Right. Um, Yeah. I, I, I mean... It's a it's a decent argument for Microsoft because they're so willing to just let other people have, like, like they yeah. fucking let we got Fallout seventy six for free yeah. on on <laughs> PlayStation yeah. right now so it makes sense. It, this is Microsoft saying, "Hey, we play fair." It's them that's acting like the victim. Yeah. Anyway, I had this all the way at the top, and it's taken this long to talk about it finally. Uh. <laughs> We got a leak for what the Tears of the Kingdom OLED oh, yeah. Switch is going to oh, look yeah. like. Uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want to be spoiled for what the Tears of the Kingdom OLED Switch is going to look like. Um, here it is. Uh, this is on Recent Era. It yeah. says, looking real dire for Switch 2 with Zelda. What does that mean? From user Kaisen over at Fami Boards. Supposedly uh, posted <coughs> on Chinese forum Tieba which had leaked Switch images in the past. Now, I, we're very skeptical of, of leaks here. Mm-hmm. We usually sometimes just don't even talk about them if, if yeah. we think that they're, that, that they're stupid or yeah. there's a potential that they're fake. I think this looks legit as hell. Yeah, I think this is the real thing. Because the pictures, first of all, look legit. And second of all, the design of it looks very much like something. New also, it, do. it's... Tears of the Kingdom, like it's going to be their big game. Of course, they're going to do a switch, uh, special edition switch. For right, yeah. right. So I don't, I don't, I don't think it looks bad. It looks pretty good. Why am I having a hard time pulling it up? Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. So here it is. Uh, it's this picture's horrible. Uh, it's gonna have gold Joy-Con, which yes. have. Yeah, we've never had official gold Joy-Con before. I don't think so. I had uh, You're the the aftermarket ones. Yeah. Um, so the right Joy-Con is has this cool white design on it, and the left one has th- that like green sort of like tech, digital design, yeah. yeah, thing that like Link's armor has. Oh, and the back is white. That's cool. Ooh. I like that. And the dock is white with gold designs on yeah. it. It's freaking cool. This this is the coolest Switch design so far. Well, I think the Switch itself is just the Switch. I don't think they did oh, yeah. anything to that system. So that's yeah. disappointing. The, the, the Switch itself is black. That's a yeah. good point. Oh, wait, no. There's designs on the back. Oh, I see. Kind of like yeah. uh, it's, it'll be a... It's like swirls. It'll be a, a spot gloss like, yeah. uh, like the Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, the, that changes things. Yeah. But still, I like having the plastic of the switch be a completely different color like yeah. all that should be gold that'd yeah. be really cool uh, my, that was my favorite part about the uh mario switch was yeah. that the whole thing was red it was the first time we got a color on the actual switch yeah 
Anyway, so it looks like the theme is gold, green, and white, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool, except for the Switch itself, which is just black, which is a little annoying. Uh, the back of the dock has some black on the inside. Uh, I don't get this. At the bottom is just a picture of a guy playing uh, Pokemon. <laughs> like a guy just playing Pokemon on his All regular right. Switch. Pull it up again. Very strange. Uh, but yeah, then there's a close up of the Joy Cons themselves, and it looks it looks pretty legit. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely gonna happen. Uh, I also think it's interesting because we're talking about rumors of a potential new Switch. Yeah, and here we are getting a special edition. Well, I mean, we got a special edition. We had a Cyberpunk 2077 and special edition of the Xbox Series, the Xbox One X. Like the same month the Series X launched. That's interesting because it ran like shit on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this game is obviously going to sell a lot. And I mean, the Switch already has a really big user base. Yes. But anybody who doesn't have it, there's a chance. This will give them a Or if you edit. really like Zelda. Or if you really like Zelda. I think this is a really, this is yeah. a really cool system. I would like to. Uh, I don't. I don't need another OLED. But you don't need another Switch. Period. I know. But I would like to yeah. get my hands on it and make a little video about it. Uh. Anyway, Capcom shuts down Code Veronica fan remake. Of course they. Boo. Did. Of course they did. The developers behind the fan remakes of, of Resident Evil One and Code Veronica. How is she holding that gun right now? That doesn't make that. that what the uh, shooting from her hips? Oh yeah. Because in that, that game, it introduced dual wielding. Oh. Yeah. So they had to emphasize What a you, unique concept. You could dual wield in this at, the, at that time, that was the thing. Right. But in this game, it wasn't very good. Because okay. it was still static camera angles. Right, right, right. Anywho, a develop, the developers behind the fan remakes of Resident Evil and Resident Evil Code Veronica have announced that development on both projects have ceased after Capcom allegedly contacted them and asked the developers to cancel the projects. 1996's Resident Evil was the start of the modern survival horror games, and 2000's Code Veronica, its third sequel, first came out on the Dreamcast in 2000. Capcom soon ported it uh, over to the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube, and then created HD versions for the 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, Resident Evil 4 producer uh, Yoshiaki Hirabayashi recently Nailed confirmed it. to IGN that there were no plans for new Code Veronica remake two years ago. Brins Croft, Matt Croft, and the animator Dark Nemesis Umbrella started their own remake projects for both games. In a video announcing Code Veronica's project's cancellation, uh, Brins Croft said that 90% of the Code Veronica fan re remake used existing assets from Capcom's other recent remake games, such as 3D models, animations, and textures. The fans released an initial Code Veronica demo back in June of 2021 and plans to put out a much more substantial one uh, in the beginning of 2023. On December 23rd, Brinscroft announced that the project's the project's Discord server that Capcom had been had sent them two cease and desist emails. Uh, one was very kind and inquired about where the animations and models had come from. The second was hostile and more <laughs> aggressive in tone. Cap uh, Kotaku reached out to Croft to request a copy of the emails. He did not send the emails, but told Kotaku that Capcom started asking about the project on December 12th. Fan developers believed uh, that Capcom canceled their unofficial remakes for being too visible and official looking. The Code Veronica remake was going to be free, so we weren't doing anyone any harm, uh, Croft said in, in the cancellation announcement video. The publisher seemed to disagree. Capcom alleged citing copyright factors and licensing agreements as reasons why the project uh, couldn't proceed. There's been public speculation that the projects were targeted for accepting financial donations via uh... coffee and PayPal. While they, did, problem. while they did accept such donations, the developers had refuted it was the reason for the project's cancellation in both Discord and via a retweet on their Twitter account. Uh, Kotaku reached out to Capcom to ask about the policies on fan projects, but did not hear a response at time of publication. I was personally a bit surprised by Capcom's decision, but hey, we were using their toys to create a free game, which has already created a lot of visibility, uh, Croft said in the video, so it's okay, we understand the cancellation. The developers announced in their Discord, uh, the developers announcement in their Discord were significantly less genial. Capcom's cancellation, uh, 
Capcom canceled it out of pure evil <laughs> since uh, since there were no signs that an official Code Veronica is coming from them. Uh, this is what they wrote on the server. He also posted a meme that compared Capcom to Nintendo, which has a reputation for enforcing their copyrights aggressively. The team will no longer be working on the Resident Evil remakes, but they intend to continue developing games. We will continue on a new project that will have a story inspired by Code Veronica without any copyright problems. That, okay, so that ending there, it sounds like maybe they will be able to pick this project apart four parts and create something that is kind of like code veronica but doesn't break any ips right but there's a reason why like the guy who made mario royale there's a yeah. reason why he changed all the assets and then shut down the game anyway because mm -hmm. it's it's still you still have to defend that in court. You yeah. still have to like, like, say that this game isn't Mario. You know, yeah. you know it's clearly Mario. You yeah. built it like Mario, and now you just changed all the guys. Yeah. You know, it's 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 harder to prove that you're not trying yeah. to capitalize off of somebody else's I, IP. I think you know, this Code Veronica is a very weird game. Yeah, and it's like a survival horror game. So you, if you make a survival horror game with a lot of like. Yeah biotechnical creations. And I stuff. think they'll get away with it. Yeah. I, 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 I think, don't think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. I think, you know, the problem is like, getting uh, marketing out for it because, you know, everybody knows Resident Evil. Nobody yeah. really knows these guys. Um, I do think it sucks that, you know, Capcom went so far as to say, stop it. Yeah. Because they're not doing anything with Code Veronica. Unless they are. What, what, what's saying that they're not going to do a remake like they did with 2 and 3? Well, because they, they've said there's no plans to do a remake of Never mind. Right so then there you go. That's that They are the ones who said Which, you know, sucks because of all the games, that's the one that probably needs the remaking the most. Yeah. You know, especially in this current, you know, landscape of them remaking all the games. So w w I want fans to be able to do whatever they want. And I want right. to be able to, I, I want there to be love letters to these games that are just stagnant or whatever. Yeah. But it is somebody else's IP, and you're <laughs> giving it away for free, you know? <laughs> well, so George Lucas's mentality when it came to Star Wars fan films mm -hmm. has always been, and I think Disney still actually adheres to this, as long as you, you don't make any money off of it, yeah. and as long as it's not, like, really damning to, like, the name of Star Wars... Go nuts. Yeah. I don't care. Do whatever you want. But, Which is, I think, is a very good and healthy mindset with the fan community. Like, if you set two very clear, reasonable boundaries, then you, you have the ability to create, like, wild and imaginative things yeah. in a fan base and cultivate a, a long-lasting fan base. And things that could help the, the main, the, the, the main exactly. product. Exactly, yeah. You know, and look at, like, Sega is essentially taking that with Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm. And it, it's worked out great for them. They even got fans to make an official song. To and they need, game. they desperately needed that. Yes. I think that, you know, uh, Capcom is clearly taking the Paramount route, uh, the way Paramount has rules for Star Trek fan films, which, you know, they it's a very long list of rules. And it basically amounts to don't. Yeah. So. But what if somebody made a Star Wars fan film? That was a new hope, and was was and it was uh, accurate to the point of being confusing. Well, counter to that, mm -hmm. do you know how many fan edits of the original trilogy? Oh, there, there are, are a lot to try and restore it to the original theatrical release. Yeah, that are available to you. I have some right now. I have some with detailed instructions on how to put it on a Blu-ray disc. I, I, I'm pretty sure I have that. Yeah, yeah. So, again, they like they set clear rules, mm -hmm. and the fans are adhering to the rules in order to create something for the fan community. Mm -hmm. Like this is not going to cost Capcom any money. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything planned and if they were to release an official co veronica that you know this game would not eat into the sales of a, an official co veronica right because the official code veronica would be on more systems because this game would probably only be on pc 
So I don't, you know, I it disappoints me when a company, when a when a game developer like comes in and like steps on fan games like this, yeah. because you're not going to cultivate, you know, a good healthy fan base if you tell your fans no so often, especially if they had no plans already. Yeah. Like like it's it's different in this case because they weren't going to do anything, and and mm-hmm. and like. If it's a franchise that's stagnant for so long, like Metroid, when they yeah. made another Metroid 2 remake yeah. or whatever, uh, that fan game, uh, when they eventually did make the Metroid 2 remake, it would have been a much bigger, and it was, it was yeah. a much bigger deal because it held fans over for, yeah. for, for a while. Uh, Luke, uh, 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 Circa says, Lucasfilms has been notorious, has been notorious to shut down video game related projects, though. Even mods for existing games used to get shut down back in the day. Hmm. Well, I was specifically talking about fan films. Right. You know, especially like, you know, before the prequels, fan, Star Wars fan films were like huge. Mm-hmm. Like, you go two feet at a convention, you'll run into one. Yeah. You know? Anyway, uh, next up we have Cowbung Collection gets a big update. It sure I have does. never, I never got this. I did. I got the physical version, and it's oh. it's in you know it's displayed with my Ninja Turtles figures. Okay. So, uh, yeah, first update for Konami is the Cowbunga Collection brings online multiplayer to Turtle the SNES version of Turtles in Time. Oh shit! I'll just skip. Uh, new additions include. A home, a new home menu icon for the Switch version. The PlayStation Four version uh, includes arcade controller support. Uh, a PS- oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, PS Four joystick support is also now uh, implemented on the PS Five. Uh, Xbox arcade stick support is now um, implemented, and Xbox joystick support now works on Xbox One and Series X and S. What uh, is it? Xbox arcade stick. Okay, so that's just X input. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when creating an online lobby, players can now set the lobby size for the two arcade games. Wait, I want to make a dis- correction. Xbox arcade stick is not X input. So I'm still confused what Xbox arcade stick means. Uh, an arcade stick made for the Xbox. Okay. Makes sense? No, because like that's just an Xbox controller. No, they're talking Why about, do you need specific... Like an actual arcade stick. I know, like a but... Street but, Fighter stick. Yeah, but that has all of the same inputs as an Xbox controller. So why does it need to be implemented? The, did the thumbstick not work in the game? It maybe, might, maybe. Maybe the directional yeah. pad didn't actually work maybe. as a directional pad. And also, pad. too, like, it's missing... Like, it would miss another analog... It's missing another analog stick. It's probably... You miss, shouldn't need it for these games. No, but, like, it's also, it's also probably missing, like... You know, it might not have all the buttons necessary. Okay. Okay, so, so some changes to controller put it configuration. This way. Better implementation of arcade sticks. It for, sounds to me more like better uh, controller options. Like right. like like now you could use the thumbstick if you really want to, or or some of the button layout can be changed to support yes. the f- eight buttons of a fight stick. Yeah. Okay. When creating an online lobby, the player can now set the lobby size for the two arcade games. Host can limit uh, two, three, or four players. When creating an online lobby, the player can now set the frame delay to automatic. When this is set, the input lag adjusts according to the number of players. New new enhancements added to the SNES and Super Famicom uh, tournament fighters. Ultimate attacks can now be enabled in story mode. Uh, New enhancements added to the Super Famicom version of tournament fighters. Group mode can now be enabled on or off. It's only available in the Japanese version of the game. Uh, new enhancements added to the arcade US Japanese version of Ninja Turtles. The number of lives per coin can be adjusted from one to five. New enhancements added to the US arcade version of Turtles in Time. The number of lives can be adjusted per coin from one to eight. New enhancements added to the US Japanese version of the arcade Ninja Turtles. Difficulty can be adjusted. Uh, you can now adjust the dis- difficulty in the arcade Turtles in Time. Uh, for Also for arcade Turtles in Time US version, the game loop can now be turned on and off, while on, the game will restart from the beginning after a credit. What? After after the credits roll, the game will start from the oh, beginning. Oh, I thought after a credit, meaning after you put I, a No, I, I read that wrong. After oh. the credits roll, the game will start from the beginning. Okay, okay. Uh, f- new button actions added to the um, U.S. Japanese arcade nin- uh, Ninja Turtles. 
uh, US Arcade Turtles in Time, SNES Fam Super Famicom Turtles in Time, and the Genesis Mega Drive Hyperstone Heist, players can now assign a button to Special. This button presses attack and jump together to make it easier to do special attacks. Wow. A new color enhancement, <laughs> new color enhancements added to all Game Boy games. Uh, added Game Boy Color Mode on and off. The new color palette option added to the pause menu for all Game Boy games. In addition to other filters, players could choose between four color palettes. Black and white, Game Boy Green, Game Boy Pocket Green, and Game Boy Light Blue. I should note, because I've actually tested this, this does not make it easier to, to tell which Ninja Turtle you're playing as. Because uh. they're all still the same color. <laughs> uh... Audio variation, uh, audio for various games and main menu adjusted. Additional pages for the NES Tournament Fighters and Genesis Tournament Fighters added to the strategy guide. Additional pages for the Genesis Tournament Fighters and Genesis Hyperstone Heist added to strategy guide. Uh, visual settings uh, are saved per game. Uh, German translation for punch repeatedly uh, has been added to strategy guides. Uh, in the music player, the cassette tape icon for the arcade TMNT shows um, the correct icon. Uh, in the SNES uh, Turtles in Time, strat uh, stage select enhancement now works even after setting our change in the options. In Hyperstone Heist, same thing. Uh, easy menu navigation enhancement for the Manhattan Project and the Ninja two, uh, TMNT 2, the Manhattan Project on Famicom. Okay, okay. There's I a th lot. I think we got it. There's a lot added to what is essentially a collection of old games. Yeah. The point I'm trying to... I mean, the big thing is they added online play to the SNES version of Turtles in Time. Um, what I'm trying, The point I'm trying to get at here is they're doing a lot and they're adding a lot to a collection of old games that traditionally it, it gets released and that's it. Right. So it's nice to see that there is support for something that could very easily not have been supported especially coming from Capcom of all companies, the notorious <laughs> we don't make video games anymore company. It's a lot. I know yeah. it's a lot, but like and it was already a good deal because it came with a billion games. It came with a billion games and I had a lot of options already mm -hmm. and they just keep adding to it. That's good. Yes. Just oh. like how they also keep adding to Shredder's Revenge. Yes. This is the one probably more people have not played, but not made by Capcom. But uh, it just got a free update. Uh, you ha added CRT filters and VCR filters. That is cool. So yeah. like a chromatic aberration. Yes. Looks like. That's um, cool. Also, of n and the VCR filter looks like substantially worse. Like there's color <laughs> distortion and stuff. It's actually pretty cool. Also of note from the update is the addition of dip switches. A throwback to arcade machines whose dip switches let operators oh adjust God. the difficulty and um, you know take all the money from you. In Shredder's Revenge, 11 custom arcade mode options let you do things like prevent taunts from refilling your ninja power gauge, have your super attacks cost health instead of ninja power, and even more. It'll even let you and your friends play with the same character, which is bound to cause confusion. That's interesting. Yeah. I do think it's a little <laughs> overpowered to have a taunt refill your like special attack. It is, it's but like crazy. you have to time it right because, you know, if you do it at a, at a spot where like a bad guy comes, yeah, you time you. it at the end of a screen every time. Right at the end of every screen, yeah. you just taunt and fill up your meter, and then just use it at the beginning of the next screen. That's cool, though. Yeah. Uh, once again, uh, continuing support for a game that's been out for a long time. Yes. Uh, and that's it. That's it. That's all we did the it. stuff. We oh no, oh, there's one more. Oh, one more. Yeah, I added one more. Oh, it's down here. Yeah. Dell shows new control. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. So, huh. I mean, I'll just summarize it real, real quick. It's got like your your traditional, you know, ABXY buttons. You know, it's, it's going to be a PC controller. What whatnot. is that? D-pad. That's the thing. Also, that's an ugly font for the ABXY. So the D-pad is a trackpad. So like a Steam controller. Yes. Oh no. Um, this is a bad idea. <laughs> yes. This is a bad idea on so many levels. Nobody wants this. No, I think we've proven time and time again that like actual physical buttons for vi for traditional style video games are the best course of action. We've yes. seen it when you put like like fighting games on 
uh, on a f cell phone. The touchpad doesn't respond the same. We've seen it with like motion control games on the Wii. Waggle doesn't work the same as a button press. But here comes Dell thinking a trackpad instead of a D-pad is what these people need. It's for PC gamers, yes. which is why there's RGB sitting on the bottom. Yes. Uh, yeah, this uh, this looks gross. I don't like it. How much are we talking? Um, it's just a prototype, so they haven't announced release date or anything yet. It also comes with uh, two rear shift buttons, as well as dual scroll wheels along the bottom uh, to easily change your settings. Um, then the two top buttons have capacitive set, uh, sensing, allowing you to slide your fingers slowly across them for different effects. The top button? Yes. What top button? I guess like the, the bumpers. Oh, God. So they're touch pads. Yeah. That's that's very stupid. I like how the, the end gadget says, it's like the Steam Controller 2.0, but worse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Like this is this is released at CES. CES is going on right now, mm -hmm. and I'm hope I'm hoping this is just a prototype to show what they're working on, and either they put out a real controller or they don't put this out at all. Yeah, I think Dell has. I mean, they own Alienware, and they don't seem to be doing much with Alienware. Right. You know, like they make computers, but like look at all of these other gaming PC companies that yeah. have come up that have come out. Alienware is lagging really far behind mm -hmm. compared, compared to those. I mean, maybe they're not. Maybe they're more mainstream and they make a lot of money in their own right. And maybe we yeah. just don't see it because we're we're in our own little bubble. But it seems like there's a lot more that they could do compared yeah. to like an NZXT or these other companies. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to see them branch out. I liked the idea that they were going to make a handheld. Yeah. And then they ended up. Uh, it cost like two thousand dollars and was and was bulky and stupid. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, now that's the last article. Yeah, CES yeah. is going on this uh, yeah. right now. I just learned of that today. Yeah, not a whole lot of like gaming stuff as of yet, but right. you know, video games have like they've been shying away from CES in favor of like their own things. Yeah. Well, I mean, they shied away from CES in favor of E3. Now they're shying away from E3. Yeah, that ma that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Anyway, uh, that's it. Now, now we. All right, tweet of the week, mate. Completed. Hold on a second. I can't yet. Uh, now I can. Here okay. Go. Oh wait, I can't. I don't have the button. I think I did this one. Okay. okay, there it is. All right. Here's the tweet of the week. Okay. I didn't put it in the key, but you'll no, just have to. You'll just have to see. Okay. Tweet of the week is uh our friend Jackson over here. Oh hi. It's a two parter. Okay. Here it is. It says, please help. I have stolen a boat and am now stranded on an island. We'll give my coordinates for rescue. Wait, was that the original tweet? Oh, now I got to go back. Okay. That was the original tweet. And then a few days go by. Okay. And then he tweets, thanks, guys. No one saved me. So now I'm stranded on an island and I'm feral. God, maybe 2024 will be my year. And then it's literally, it's him yeah. looking feral as hell. <laughs> oh, that boy. I thought that was pretty good. That is funny. Anyway, oh, and then wait, somebody, somebody photo photoshopped him as Gollum. Nice. Anyway, uh, now we'll talk to you people. Real yes, quick. starting with people who left comments on our last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, a YouTube dot com a slash Wolf Den podcast. Yes. Uh, let me get in here real quick. We got Mylin. Who says, although I didn't contribute to your Spotify results and English isn't my first language, I am a Dutch fan of yours and happy happily watch your podcast every Wednesday here on YouTube. Well, thank oh, you. Thank you. Mylon. Uh, and your English is great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gamer CF97 says, I actually have epilepsy and it is surprising what things don't have warnings. Although to be fair, photosensitive epilepsy is something like only 10% of epileptics have. Thankfully, not me. So yeah, so yay, I can play games. So what is it then? If it's not photosensitive. What do you mean? If it's not photosensitivity that is activating your epilepsy, what? I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you know them, but I, some epilepsy is just triggered on its own. I think that there is a misconception that the lights is the epilepsy you right know, like the, the sensitivity to light yeah. is the epilepsy i mean you know 
a lot of a lot of games like well especially back in the day like they've gotten better at it now mm-hmm. like they do feature a lot of like flashing lights right and you know that can trigger somebody to have it even people who don't have epilepsy can like fall into shock from it mm-hmm. epilepsy is a disorder in which nerve cell activity in the brain is disturbed causing seizures it's really just having seizures yeah Anyway, uh, go forth, says Wolf Bros. A lot of people in the comments have been giving you crap for your questionable snack choices. Just want you to know that I do respect your choices for what they are. Absolute hot garbage (laughs) and objectively (laughs) offensive to everyone that enjoys food. LOL, good episode, guys. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. And then AJ says, original Lay's over Doritos is some psychopath shit. AJ, you've known us for how long? Obviously, we're psychopaths. Yeah. You don't see us as Lay's people? No. Doritos, people go. People got to relax with Doritos. They're not that fucking good. Again, red bag Doritos. Good shit. Blue bag Doritos. Burn it. Doritos are just a they're, nacho that was dipped around in the Cheeto dust. Yes. That's it. Prince Wolfchild says, I was today years old when I learned that the Wolf Boys have bad taste in snacks. Cool Ranch is top tier. You're an idiot. Yeah, I don't care what kind of prince you are. You're not a wolf child of this tribe. <laughs> we, especially, especially because you spell your name wrong. We got to eat more snacks on this show. Yeah. And, get, and, and, and you're, you're just fueling our... our yeah. You're, 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 you're giving us fuel. And to, guess to what? To make now I'm snacks. hungry. Yeah, now I want a snack. We need more snacks. Yeah. It's a nacho for the person on the go. Is this the real house? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I like that. I Timmy Two Shoes says, I think that the uh, I think the fact that gummy bears weren't listed at all makes the list null and void. That's not our fault. We didn't yeah. choose the snack. Also, like gummy bears, like you can't have a fistful of gummy bears. Um, unless you want to diarrhea your pants. Yeah. So unless you want diabetes right that second. Like mm-hmm. a good snack, like you can have a fistful of. We're reading the chat now, by yes. the way. Uh, M. M. Skelton. I'll read his because he yelled my name. <laughs> Bob, I need help. I've been playing Super Mario Land on my dad's old SNES, and it's fucking hard. Super Mario Land on an old SNES. Might be through that. the Game Boy Player. It has to be. Yeah. Um, that game is. Is it hard? Is it the original Super Mario Land. Yeah, because it's it's the weird one. It plays really yeah. poorly. So, uh, why are you playing it? <laughs> it's not that good of a game. Yeah. Somebody tweeted the other day uh, a picture of Super Mario Land and said, this is the best Game Boy game. And, like, it's a good Game Boy game. Yeah. But, like, it's, I don't think it's... It's nobody's favorite Game Boy game. I, I don't game. think it's close to the best no. Game Boy game. No. It's think, a good game. You know, I think... But, like, it's a good Game Boy game, but it's yeah. not that good. Also, I, I think everyone agrees, you know, the sequel is better. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, that's... The first have, one's barely a Mario game. Yeah. That's just, you have, like, Tetris and Pokemon and, you know, all these other yeah. better games on it. Yeah. Uh, But, I, like, I love Game Boy games, but then when you think about it and you lay them all out, there's really not that many good ones. Well, I think the problem <laughs> is, like, most of those, you know... All the way up until like the Game Boy Advance, even like the DS, really. Yeah, you had like your handful of good games, but because portable systems are so much easier and cheaper to manufacture for, there's just a mountain of crap. Yeah, there's a lot of crap. Uh oh, I should read notifications if we have any. Mecha Dragon yeah. with 100 bits. I know it's been over a month, but it's still great to see the Wolf Bros together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. GSP, thanks for the Prime. Warlock, thanks for 15 months. Nice Zelda Switch. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Uh, I keep accidentally pinning comments. No. <laughs> Game Boy is like the NES. There are some good games, but mostly not fun libraries to go back to. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bad NES games. Too. Like, NES only has, like, five games, I would say, but I are, think, like, like, great. I think, like, the NES, like, those games hold up better overall than the Game Boy games. I, I might disagree. I, it... I don't even think it's a well. Yeah, I guess it's about them holding up yeah. because back then we were ecstatic to play some of those games, yeah. but like they're just not good. That became really apparent to me when I was when it, they all came out for Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, because like Mario One and Two, 
And that was the only good games. Yeah. Uh, will us as a society make it to 2024? Uh, Questionable. Yeah. We might evolve into a different kind of society. Outlook not looking good. Yeah. You guys were talking about Hitman, and it made me think of this, says Otaku Sam. Uh, the Assassin's Creed Anniversary Edition Mega Bundle? Okay. Hold on, I have to type in my age? What is it? Okay, what is it? $45. Down, it's half off. What is this? Oh my god, it's $100 usually? Yeah. What the well, fuck? right now it's $45. Uh, it comes with... Oh, this comes with like six Assassin's Creed games. For the Switch. Yes. It and comes... I guess it's not streaming? Anniversary no. edition yeah, no. requires download of at least 34 gigabytes. Uh, it comes with Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, and Assassin's Creed Rogue, Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, and Assassin's Creed 3. That's pretty good. That's, a, that's actually a pretty good deal. Is Assassin's Creed 1 on Switch? Because why wouldn't they include that? They didn't. They never remade that. I mean, I mean, they didn't put that game a lot of places. I don't think because it wasn't. People didn't like that game. I know. <laughs> but I'm because they they literally put every other Assassin's Creed game on Switch because they don't want you to start with one. Because if you start with one, you're not gonna like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys think that the Arkham games will get a PS5 upgrade? No. No, I don't think Warner Brothers. No, Warner Brothers is actually very bad about um, supporting a game for very long. Mm -hmm. I think it actually was when Arkham Origins came out, uh, W. Montreal was working on a patch to fix like a major game breaking bug, and Warner Brothers told them, no, go work on this DLC instead. Mm -hmm. So they basically like, they want their studios to move on to the next thing and just like. Release the game, get on with it, and, you know, move on. Yeah. Uh, Quan in the chat says, did you have any weird Italian snacks growing up? No, because my our mother was Sicilian and they didn't have snacks. No, you couldn't have fun in Sicily. Yeah. Yeah. They were like those little Italian wafers. Yeah. We would get like pastries. We're a big pastry family, yeah, yeah. but that's like a special occasion yeah. type, type thing, you know? Uh, Screamy Yelly Gamer says, "What about the chili Doritos?" Yeah, those are good. Yeah, but those are just basically regular Doritos with spice on it. Put it to you this way: I'm not going to go into a like a. It's very, it's very rare for me to go to a supermarket and be like, "Let me get some chips." Yeah, you know. And if I do, it's probably not Doritos. Yeah, Assassin's Creed One only on PS3, 360, and Windows. Wow. I thought it would at least be on Xbox One. I mean, I, I think it's backwards compatible on Xbox One, but... I guess that's why I never got into AC. I always tried to start with AC One, and I hated it. I liked Assassin's... Okay, so how what was my relationship? I got Assassin's Creed One when it came out. Yeah. Played it for a little bit, stopped playing it, and then right before 2 came out, I jumped back in, and apparently I was at the end. I just never finished it, and then I beat it. <laughs> And then I was into two. I remember. And, and like, Assassin's Creed 1 is very boring. And then all the cool shit happens at the end. Yeah. So like when I picked it up to finish it, all the cool shit was happening. Right. You know? See, I, I played it. I was liking it despite its very clunky control setup. Yeah. It was very clunky. I thought the ending was dumb. <laughs> it was so stupid. They all are. Yeah, but well, I, but I I kind of like how wacky it, yeah. it gets at the end. I do think Assassin's Creed Two was much better in terms yeah. of like everything because it was more variety, more like the controls were better, the story was better, even though that also had a dumb ending. Uh, I do hate Assassin's Creed Two because two levels were missing from that game that you had to get separately as DLC. Yep. So yeah, they purposely left them out. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big Ubisoft thing back in the day. Their 2008 Prince of Persia game, which is a fantastic game. The ending is $10 DLC. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. What is the island in Resident Evil 4? It's the ending. Is that the Ada missions? Which Ada missions? There's two. 
Oh, so, so, so I just saw an article saying that uh, Resident Evil 4, mm-hmm. the remake, is going to have the island in it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Isn't that the Ada thing? Or you could play it as well, Tofu? No. the So I think the island they're referring to is like towards the end of the game where like you fight Krauser and like that. Like those like abandoned buildings. Okay. That's like towards the end. There's assignment Ada where she has to she has to like run a gauntlet through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. yeah. Then there's separate ways, which was added to all the other releases of Resident Evil Four. That's like a whole other side story. So why was it even an article to say that that was going to be included? Like, isn't it uh, part of the fucking game? Yeah, I, I would hope it's included. Are they saying that the Ada missions, Ada and Hunk, that's what Ada and Hunk go through the the island? You play as them going through the island. I don't, I don't, I don't that would because that is a yeah. separate thing. Yeah, that makes so there, sense. there's two side stories. There's assignment Ada, and yeah. there's separate ways. Separate ways is the more that's like the bigger expansive story that goes through the whole story of resident evil see 4. this article says resident evil 4 remake reportedly keeping controversial area from the original game what air controversial the area? island and then here is a picture of ada why was it controversial I don't know. i've never that, heard that's the why i was con- very confused too i've never heard i, of the island I was like what do you mean it's what? harder but i want to say it's controversial resident evil 4 remake will be keeping a section from the original game that provided to be fairly divisive as the time of this release the resident evil 4 remake is following in the footsteps of the previous resident evil remakes retaining the general framework of the original game while also making significant enough changes that it could feel like a whole new experience okay they gotta keep a word count i guess from what's <laughs> been shown so far the resident evil 4 remake has a darker tone than the original game okay can you get to the point uh, the latest issue of Edge magazine has reportedly interviewed Resident Evil 4 remake developers, confirming that the original's core areas are all represented in the remake. This means that fans can expect to visit the village, uh, as seen in uh, the previous trailers, the castle, and ultimately the controversial island. The original Resident Evil 4 is one of the highest rated and most influential video games of all time. Yeah, I know. Uh, the island returning to Resident Evil 4 remake is not surprising, though some fans may be disappointed to get confirmation that this is indeed making a comeback. On the bright side, it seems that Capcom is aware of how some fans weren't impressed by the island and could be addressing some of the feedback. There will apparently be a lot more to do on the island in the Resident Evil 4 remake, so it will be interesting to see what that means. The only thing I can think of is whenever people talk about Resident Evil games, they always talk about the beginning of the game. Like, when people talk about the first game, they talk about the Spencer Mansion. Yeah. They don't talk about the lab at the end. Same thing with Resident Evil 2. They talk about, you know, the police department, not the lab at the end. Resident Evil 4, people talk about the village and the castle, not the lab at the end. (laughs) (laughs) I like the lab at the end of... Because it... it's new and different like like you're playing through this whole game right yeah and then they always talk about you throughout the game you start hearing yeah. about these like this like conspiracy and all of these th- things and you start to unfold it and then all of a sudden you enter the thing you've been reading about through yeah. all these passages and it's fucking cool well i think it kind of becomes disappointing when every single game ends at the lab like i just yeah. played the resident evil 3 remake that ends in a lab mm-hmm. it also turns into a fucking anime <laughs> and i and i thought that i was like losing my mind so i actually went back to see how the original resident evil 3 ended it didn't end like that okay interesting so uh you know the island it's a, it's a part i mean yeah it's substantially different from resident evil 4 like it's not the best part of the game but like it's still it's resident evil 4 the island zone full of air support raids bombardments uh, and giant machines is for many people the first hints of the road capcom would take in the following entries of the franchise so is that like mostly action Maybe yeah that's what it is I that's guess. just when you're playing resident evil 4 there's a lot of like weird action segments yeah and you get more and more as you play but like game. That's still the section of the game that has like those like scary Iron Maiden villains mm-hmm. that just like slowly come at you and if they grab you they hit you with spikes and you have to like take out your infrared scope to take out all of like the leeches on them. Mm-hmm. Like that's tense and terrifying and the music doesn't help. Right. So Resident Evil 4 always remembers to be a horror game first. Right, right, right. I will say though, Resident Evil 7 does not end in a lab. Interesting. Yeah. 
uh yeah i i i again i thought that was strange because i i remember i only remember the island from the ada mission and 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 the right. hulk thing uh i don't remember it being an issue when i played the game no i don't either yeah so i mean I, I remember it being different but i remember like i still i played that game how many times yeah so is it controversial that at the end of the last of us you you've got a fucking machine gun like yeah that's different but like it kind of leads up to that you yeah. like oh, get better and better weapons and shit i don't know anyway uh are we done here Bob, mm-hmm. I purchased my Quest 2 last year after watching your review on it. Thanks, RG, uh, SG Treeper. I hope you like it a lot. Yeah. I got to play more on my Quest 2. Uh, guys, thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for talking with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand. Whenever you want, if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. You know who's streaming right now? Jerry's streaming right now. Oh, boy. All right, guys. Have a good time. Yeah. yeah if you want to see, some, if you want to see something wild. Yeah. You're going to go see old Uncle Jerry. He might say something unsavory. Yeah. <laughs> go over there and say hello. And we'll uh, see you next week. I'll probably see you Thursday. Maybe. I've been, I, listen, I've been streaming a lot more over here on Twitch.tv slash Wolf Come hang out. We'll see you later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.